Hello everyone. A very good morning to all of you. Am I clearly visible, audible to, audible to you guys? Dr. Sai, Rocky. Can someone confirm if I am clearly visible, audible? We will start the class ahead. You can see my screen well. Is everything good to go? Can someone from the audience give me confirmation? If everything is good to go, give me a few seconds. Thank you. Thank you for confirming. Rocky, thank you. So thanks a lot. A very, very good morning to all of you. A new day, a new enthusiasm, new energy. So today with this new day, uh, I am going to start a new series. Okay. So I am going to start oncology series today. Okay. The most awaited and the most demanding series. Many students asked me to take this series since long. So finally the time came okay so today we are going to start this oncology series in this series i am going to cover from pathology point of view i am going to cover most important tumors of human body from which questions usually questions are asked in all competitive exams whatever exam you are targeting you are targeting for next neat pg you know fmg nict whatever exam you are targeting a usmle the questions are always from oncology so currently I am interested in the latest classification, gross and histopathology of all these tumors of human body. So I will start with the brain tumor, thyroid tumor, breast tumor, salivary gland tumor, hepatobiliary tumor in which I will cover the liver, pancreas and gallbladder tumor, GIT tumor in which I will cover the stomach and intestinal tumors, appendix tumor, all the renal tumors, testicular tumor, prostate tumor, penile tumor, in the female genital tract, cervix tumor, ovarian tumor, uterus tumor and lastly the bone tumors. If I left something and you think it is important from the exam point of view, you can tell me we can add that also. So this is the plan of complete oncology series right but before that before coming on the individual tumor the classification the gross histopathology prognosis i will not be taking the treatment portion the radiotherapy the chemotherapy portion i will not be taking that the surgical portion no i will take only classification gross histopathology and important points related to that so your 70 80 percent of all the tumor questions will be covered during this okay got my point got it so uh, but before that, you must understand the basics, Anna, which is common for all tumors. What is neoplasia? How many types of neoplasia is there? What is benign tumors? What is malignant tumor? How to basically differentiate benign tumor and malignant tumor? Why it is important to differentiate benign tumor from uh, malignant tumor? Is the treatment is different? Is the prognosis is different? So how to differentiate it pathologically, histopathologically, I mean, right? And what is the nomenclature? And what? why does tumor occur? The most important question why at genetic level can you tell me the uh, molecular level the genetic basis of the neoplasia the most important the genes involved in the neoplasia the proto-oncogene the tumor suppressor gene the uh, uh, DNA repair gene so all these we are going to take today in part one so in part one today's session I am not going to take the individual tumors but I am going to take the basics of neoplasia I will start with the introduction to the oncology the nomenclature of the tumors benign versus malignant tumors there are many questions on this okay I will give you the concept of the dysplasia anaplasia metaplasia then we will see the metastasis what are the steps in the metastasis involved metastasis occurs only in malignant tumors not in benign tumors the most important we will see the molecular basis of the neoplasia today all the genes I was talking about so we will discuss the important genes the RAS RAS gene p53 gene ABL BCR translocation so all these retinoblastoma gene the important important one we will discuss here the carcinogenesis the three type of carcinogenesis I am going to discuss the physical chemical and biological in the biological I am going to cover all the viruses parasites as well as the bacteria which cause as cancer the oncogenic organisms I mean okay then the most important is paraneoplastic syndrome if you don't know basic now if I take the individual tumor directly and I directly talk about the genes I directly talk about the paraneoplastic syndrome in all these tumors you will not understand many students don't understand ma'am paraneoplastic syndrome what do you mean by that what do you mean by that so you should have a basic understanding what is grading of tumor what is staging of tumor there are four grades grade one two three four there are four stages one two three four but grading is done by the pathologist and staging is done by the clinician you must understand the difference between them both indicate the prognosis of the tumor but what is the difference how do we do grading how do we do staging what are the different systems which are available and finally the diagnosis of cancer what are the various ways available for the diagnosis of cancer on which many questions comes in your exam so today is the basics today is the foundation of neoplasia so in today three four hours we are going to cover the basics of the neoplasia and in the part two part three onwards we will cover the individual tumors is the plan good for you 
can we go ahead can we go ahead yes i will try to finish this series as soon as possible today is part one we are going to cover the basics right so let's start neoplasia the basics of the neoplasia are you people with me can you give everyone thumbs up can we start ahead yes so let's start neoplasia what is neoplasia neoplasia split the term neo means new and plasia means growth so it is the new growth neoplasia means new growth any new growth in the human body is known as neoplasia the new growth which is extra growth which is formed from head to toe anywhere in the body it is known as neoplasm or tumor neoplasm and tumor are same now most of the students may have misconception that tumor is always malignant no tumor term is generalized it can be benign it can be malignant the same way neoplasm it can be benign it can be malignant the branch of the science which deals with the neoplasm is oncology okay so can you see a cell here let me explain you the basics why does neoplasia occur and what is the definition of neoplasm can you see a cell see i have labeled this cell as a normal cell this cell is a normal cell why i am calling this cell as a normal cell can you see this is a normal cell um, on the surface of the cell, can you see this is a growth receptor and when the growth factor is coming, binding with the growth receptor, then only it is doing the mitosis, otherwise it will not do the mitosis. So I will call this growth factor as the stimulus. So I will say the mitosis or the cell division is under control. So in my body, whenever the body requires to do the cell division, the stimulus will come. The stimulus will come and it will indicate, it will give the signal to the cell that you have to divide. Then only any particular cell in my body, in normal human body, it will divide. Otherwise, the cell do not divide. This cell is normal cell. I mean to say the uh, cell division is under control. It's physiological. It's normal. Now, let me show you one more diagram. Can you see this diagram? I am saying this cell is not normal. This is neoplastic cell. What is the difference between the last cell and this cell? Can you make out? See the diagram carefully. You can make it out. You can see on the surface of this cell again there is a growth receptor. The growth receptor is there. But even in absence of the stimulus, there is no stimulus. The stimulus is not coming and binding here. It is doing the mitosis. So can I say this cell loses the control? Loses the control of doing cell division? Can I say it is doing uncontrolled cell division? So it is doing the cell division de novo by itself. There is no stimulus. So any cell in human body, we have millions of cells in our body. Okay. There are many cells. Our head to toe, uh, the body is made up of all organs the organs are made up of cell cell is the structural and functional unit of the life we know that so if any cell uh, have this thing like it loses the control of the stimulus without stimulus it is dividing so it is uncontrolled now it is uncontrolled it can divide like anything from 1 to 2 2 to 4 4 to 8 8 to 16 16 to 32 32 to 64 so on and a cluster a mass of cell is formed a mass of cell is known as neoplasm so what is a neoplastic cell what is a neoplastic cell what is a neoplasm how you will define neoplasm it is the abnormal mass of the tissue of course we can see it's the abnormal mass of the tissue the growth of which is exceeded and uncoordinated the cell division is exceeded and uncoordinated word is important right so it is in the same manner even after cessation of the stimuli cessation means absence even after absence of the stimuli it keep on dividing keep on dividing keep on dividing so this is the biggest thing only a small difference here the cell is dividing but in presence of stimuli it is under control and here the cell is dividing in absence of stimulus without control that leads neoplasm that leads neoplasm now why it occurs i will tell you neoplasm can occur in any part of the body from head to toe it can be oral cancer it can be any 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 cancer right we will see all the cancers one by one okay can we go ahead now there are two components there are two components in all the cancers there are uh, two components the parenchymal component and the stroma what is parenchyma the parenchyma is the cells can you see the tumor cells which form the tumor the tumor cells so the nomenclature and the behavior will be due to the parenchymal component and the background is the stroma the supportive background is the stroma it contains blood vessels it contains nerves it contains bone cartilage muscle tissue right so the supportive stroma is there it contains fibrous connective tissue and the blood vessel so parenchyma is the main tumor cell that is the components of the tumor you can see here it's a diagram of the breast cancer in front of you you can see the tumor cells are in clusters they are forming small groups small clusters in one group multiple tumor cells are present so this is parenchymal component appreciate the background in the background you can see the fibrosis can i show you this pink color structure i'm highlighting the background appreciate the background the background is a stroma now let me tell you a term desmoplasia on which frequently mcq is asked desmoplasia so desmoplasia when the stroma is abundant in contrast to the parenchymal in in comparison to the parenchymal component background compo background jo stroma hai na, that is abundant showing excessive fibrosis 
सच ट्यूमर्स इज नोन एज डेस्मोप्लास्टिक ट्यूमर्स For example, serous carcinoma of breast. See this diagram. Can you see where is the parenchymal component? These are the clusters of the tumor cells, but they are not very, very much as compared to the background stroma. Background stroma is showing too much fibrosis. It is known as desmoplasia. The tumors showing desmoplasia are aggressive in nature. Okay, so please take all the information, whatever you can gather. Give me a minute. Let me open your chat. Just a second. just a second let me open the chat i cannot see your chat yeah i can see the chat now okay yes these are the aggressive tumors now let me tell you the nomenclature of the tumor how we do the nomenclature of the tumor there are two type of tumors the benign tumors the malignant tumors all the benign tumors and in oma the suffix is oma fibroma chondroma osteoma so any tumor in the suffix oma is a benign tumor please learn any tumor having the suffix as oma is a benign tumor please learn that the suffix is oma here so the tumor of the fibroblast is fibroma the tumor of the cartilage is chondroma the tumor of the osteoblast the bone is osteoma any tumor benign can you see there you have to learn two special terms here papilloma okay looking at the suffix it's oma so of course it's benign yes it's benign but what do you mean by the term papi papi means finger like can you see the fingers the shape of a fingers this is this is known as papi so can you see the diagram here so the shape of the tumor appreciate the shape here appreciate is like this so this is known as papilloma on which you frequently get mcq either a image based question or a simple question uh, that uh, papilloma is finger like projection it's a benign tumor having finger like projection it can occur in multiple organs papilloma in the thyroid also in the renal tissue also it occurs the next is the adenoma again looking at the suffix you will say ma'am it's oma oma means benign okay i agree it's benign what do you mean by the term adi adi means glands so benign tumor of the glands benign tumor of the glands is known as adenoma again it occurs in multiple organs you can see these all are glands these all are small 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 glands having a lumen inside them and it's a benign tumor you can see here intestine is shown to you you can see this is the normal intestine this is the normal intestine and here there is a gland the tumor of the gland and it's a benign tumor it is known as adenoma right there are four exception for this rule what i told you i told you whenever the suffix is oma it's benign na no? i told you this whenever the suffix is oma it's benign but there are four exceptions what are the four exceptions melanoma seminoma mesothelioma and lymphoma see the suffix melanoma seminoma mesothelioma lymphoma they also have oma in their suffix but these are not benign these are malignant the examiners always love exception never forget whenever there is a exception you have to be very careful and you have to learn it thoroughly because examiner don't ask you the normal question they will ask you the question on the exception they can ask you melanoma is it benign or malignant seminoma so if you learn the rule oma means benign you will get confused melanoma it's a malignant tumor of the skin seminoma it's a malignant tumor of the uh, testes or ovaries uh, in the ovaries it is known as dysgerminoma although mesothelioma it's a malignant tumor of the pleura and lymphoma it's a malignant tumor of the lymph nodes so these are the four exceptions you have to learn okay so let's go ahead so here you can see all the oma benign tumors see benign tumors don't see the malignant one benign squamous cell papilloma transitional cell papilloma adenoma okay you can see adipose tissue lipoma fibrous tissue fibroma embryonic fibrous tissue myxoma chondroma osteoma synovioma leiomyoma rhabdomyoma hemangioma lymphangioma meningioma so neurofibroma lymphoma is an exception here it's pseudo lymphoma is given so all the omas are there and you can see the corresponding tissue the corresponding tissue the tumor of that particular tissue you have to add oma in the suffix that's about the benign let's come on the malignant what is the suffix for the malignant what is the suffix for the malignant malignant mein kya suffix lagayenge so malignant mein we have two types of epithelium in human body in human body our all the organs have one of the two type of epithelium either there is uh, either there is uh, you can say mesenchymal i mean there are two type of tissue there are two type of tissue either there is mesenchymal tissue or there is epithelial tissue okay mesenchymal tissue means bone muscle and epithelial tissue means we have squamous lining columnar lining right so epithelial is of two type the squamous lining and the columnar lining so suffix will differ suffix will differ you got my point so if the tumor is occurring in the mesenchymal tissue apply the suffix as sarcoma the suffix will be sarcoma not only oma it's complete sarcoma and if the tumor is arising from the epithelial origin the suffix is carcinoma carcinoma again i say not only oma sirf oma nahi hai it's not oma it's the complete carcinoma so look at the suffix suffix is sarcoma or carcinoma so in malignant tumors we have two suffix either carcinoma 
or sarcoma. It depends on the tissue. In benign, we don't differentiate. We use always oma. We use always oma. Here, either sarcoma or carcinoma. Here, as I told you, there are two types of epithelium. If it is squamous, it is known as squamous cell carcinoma. And if it is columnar, columnar means glands. So, it is known as adeno. Adeno means glands, I told you. Adenocarcinoma. So, the carcinoma are further of two types. This is malignant tumors. So, malignant tumors, you can see in front of you, the malignant tumors, if they are arising from the mesenchymal origin, they are sarcomas. And if they are arising from the epithelial origin, it is known as carcinoma. Carcinoma further of two types. Squamous cell carcinoma arising from the squamous lining and adenocarcinoma arising from the columnar lining. So, it will be very easy for you if you know the lining of that particular organ, you can make it out what type of tumor it is going to have. Got my point? So, you can say this is the thing. Have a look on the malignant side now. The same table. Have a look. So, the epithelial tumors I am showing you. Squamous cell, carcinoma. Transitional cell, carcinoma. Adeno, carcinoma. Hepatocellular, carcinoma. Choreo, carcinoma. You got my point? lipoma Here it is liposarcoma. Fibrosarcoma. So, see the suffix. Mixosarcoma, chondrosarcoma, osteosarcoma, synovial sarcoma, leomyosarcoma, rhabdomyosarcoma. So, all these are sarcomas. Here, oma was the suffix. You can make it out. And here, sarcoma or carcinoma is the suffix. So, this is the summary. So, my point is that the final, the final version is that regarding nomenclature of the tumors. Regarding nomenclature of the tumors, we have two types of tumors, the benign and the malignant. So, all the benign tumors end in the suffix oma. Without any confusion, oma, but there are four exceptions. You know the four exceptions. Melanoma, seminoma, lymphoma and the fourth one, you know that, right? So, these are the four exceptions. Now, among the malignant, we have two types of tissue. If it is mesenchymal tissue, the suffix is sarcoma, okay? And if it is epithelial tissue, okay, the suffix is carcinoma. The suffix is carcinoma. Got it? Can we go ahead? Can we go ahead? So, this is the thing. So, this is the summary till now. This is the summary till now. Now, coming on two special categories of the tumor, which are not actually tumor. So, they look like tumor. Now, see. See the terms. Hamartoma and choreostoma. So, you will see, ma'am, it is also having oma. It is also having oma. So, according to my theory, you will see, ma'am, these both are benign tumors. They have the suffix oma. So, I will say these are not at all tumors. These are not benign, not malignant. These are tumor. These are not at all tumors. Right. So, let me tell you what is hamartoma, what is choreostoma. These are not actual tumors. They look like tumors but not tumors. So, you get many questions on hamartoma and choreostoma. Let me explain you. Let me explain you what is hamartoma, what is choreostoma. Uh, hamartoma is abnormal tissue at normal site. Choreostoma is normal tissue at abnormal site. You say, what do you mean normal tissue, abnormal site, abnormal tissue, normal site? So, in the exam, you can get confused. Let me explain you clearly. Let me explain you hamartoma. Let me explain you hamartoma. Can you see this diagram? The two diagrams are in front of you. Both are hamartomas. This is the hamartoma of the lung. This is the hamartoma of the spleen. Let's have a look on the spleen. In the spleen, we have red pulp, we have white pulp. So, can you see this tissue? This tissue is red pulp only. This tissue is red pulp only. So, the site is normal. I mean to say the site is normal. Red pulp occurs in spleen only. Here also it's in spleen only. So, the site is not ectopic. It's normal site. But the only thing, the tissue become maldeveloped. The tissue of the red, uh, uh, red uh, pulp, it become focally malformation. Focal developmental malformation occurs. Tissue become disorganized. That is the thing. But you say, ma'am, is this tissue anaplastic? I will say no. It's not cancer. If you see it histopathologically, it's normal. It's not anaplastic. No anaplasia is there. No dysplasia is there. No dysplasia, no anaplasia Asia means it's not a tumor. It's not a tumor. Got my point? The only thing it is malformed. Malformed. And the site is normal. Got my point? Here also you can see this is the lung. Now having the cartilage, in, I mean it is a respiratory tract. In the respiratory tract we have the cartilage. No? We have the cartilages in the trachea. I know. So here it's the cartilage you can see which got malformed. So again the site is normal but tissue become malformed. So it is a focal developmental malformation. The tissue become disorganized. The tissue is mature. And the site is indigenous. The site is the native. The site is the normal. So, site is normal, but tissue become abnormal. Hamartoma of lung contains cartilage. Hamartoma of spleen contains red pulp and white pulp. So, this is the example of hamartoma. What is choreostoma? See the diagram. Can you see this is tongue? Can you see in the tongue, this is bone. Bone, osteocartilage, bone and cartilage. You will say, my tongue don't have bone and cartilage like this thing, something. So, here I will say, if you and if you see the histopathology of this bone and uh, cartilage, it's absolutely normal. I mean to say here, the site is abnormal. And if you see the tissue, tissue is not malformed, not dysplastic, not anaplastic. Tissue is absolutely normal. Tissue is normal, but the site is abnormal. Can you see this? We are doing the endoscopy. In the endoscopy, inside the stomach, we can find the pancreas. 
if you take this tissue out and if you do the histology you will find normal pancreas you will say how come it possible pancreas inside the stomach is it possible yes sometimes it is possible so here we have the pancreas inside the stomach so i will it's normal pancreas absolutely normal so site is abnormal but tissue is normal so it is the ectopic site can i say ectopic island yes it's ectopic island of the normal tissue it is known as heterotopia so that is choreostoma so what we have learned we have learned this we have learned normal tissue at abnormal site is choreostoma abnormal tissue at normal site normal site matlab native site matlab indigenous site it's hematoma how many of you got it how many of you got it can we go ahead can we go ahead yes ibrahim leukemia is an exception you can say because it is a blood cancer we are talking here about the solid cancers leukemias are the blood cancers na we will take hemato oncology also but yeah for this nomenclature it's an exception you can say okay so can we go ahead say yes ha huh? one more last thing teratoma teratoma is also a special category of tumor you know human body have you read embryology you may have read read embryology in your first prof of ambibs right whenever you read the anatomy and embryology is a part of that so in the embryology you may have read that human body is made up of three germ cell layers there are three germ cell layers the ectoderm the mesoderm and the endoderm we all know that now in our complete body some organs are made up of ectoderm some are mesoderm some are endoderm i exactly forgot the distribution but ectoderm uh, like mesoderm is uh, the bones and the muscles made up of mesoderm the blood vessels are made up of mesoderm endoderm ectoderm so in one organ there is one germ cell layer it's a rule one organ having one germ cell layer so if the tumor occurs in that particular organ the tumor is arising from one germ cell layer because one organ have one germ cell layer you got my point normally so normally all the tumors we have all the tumors we have in all the tumors we have one germ cell component only one of the one of the three germ cell component i mean either it is ecto or it is meso or it is endo one of the germ cell because all the organs have one 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 germ cell maybe ecto maybe endo maybe meso got my point but teratomas are the tumors which arise from totipotent cell what are totipotent cell totipotent cells are the cells which can differentiate in all the three germ cell layer they can differentiate in ecto also they can differentiate in meso also they can differentiate in endo also got it so that is one of the three germ cell layer they can differentiate in any one of them and if the tumor occurs in them it is known as teratoma i mean to say teratoma are the tumor which contain all three germ cell layer it is an exception so teratomas are germ cell tumors commonly composed of all three germ cell layers ectoderm mesoderm endoderm these are the tumors of the totipotent cell so it is a tumor inside which you can get anything technically anything of human body it's a tumor it usually occurs in the uh testes and ovaries in the males and females respectively so it's a tumor when you when you surgically remove the tumor part from the testes and the ovaries and if you cut the tumor the gross is a, you can say it's a spotter image it's a spotter you can get the hairs inside that you can get the teeth inside yes inside the testes inside the ovaries you are getting the hairs you are getting the teeth you are getting the bone you are getting the cartilage you are getting the salivary gland you are getting the brain inside the testes and ovaries you are getting technically any tissue any tissue here also you can see hairs so it's a spotter image based question in your exam very easy question so such a image of a tumor is coming in your exam showing the hair showing the teeth showing the bone showing any 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 tissue multiple tissue inside one one tumor it's teratoma so usually it contains teeth hair bone muscle anything right it can be benign it can be malignant got it so that's the teratoma that's the teratoma just a second so this is the meaning of the teratoma can we go ahead we will solve some mcqs now you have to do after every section we will solve some mcqs and i want to be attentive throughout the session and you have to answer all the questions now till now whatever we have read now i will see how many of you were awake so kindly write your answer in the comment box you have to be fast you have to be accurate okay the first question is in front of you carcinoma originating from the glands i am asking the carcinoma i mean i want to ask the malignant one originating from the glands is known as basal cell carcinoma squamous cell carcinoma adenocarcinoma or fibrosarcoma yes what is the correct answer yes sanyash sanyasi yes absolutely right absolutely right you all are right you all are right very good very good the correct answer here is adenocarcinoma i told you the term adeno adeno ka matlab hota hai glands adeno the meaning of the adeno is glands now adeno adeno means gland hai na the term adeno means gland now it can be benign tumor it can have malignant tumor the glands mein benign tumor bhi ho sakta hai malignant bhi ho sakta hai both the tumors can occur in the glands so if benign tumor is there we will call it ad adenoma that is oma and if malignant tumor is occurring it is known as adeno 
carcinoma adenocarcinoma now appreciate the two terms here this is adenoma and this is adenocarcinoma both are adi 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 means glands tumor of gland so tumor benign tumor of gland adenoma or malignant tumor of gland adenocarcinoma so here they are asking the carcinoma of the gland now so answer is adenocarcinoma got my point so this is the thing so this is the simple question based on the nomenclature coming on the next question tumor containing cells of all three germ cell layer a unique tumor which contain all the three germ cell layer the ectoderm also mesoderm also and endoderm also multiple germ cell layers present inside one tumor the exceptional tumor is it leomyoma common cell carcinoma adenocarcinoma or teratoma what is the correct answer yes yes so very good very good you all are right i want everyone to write at max you will be wrong it's okay but try at least yes the correct answer is teratoma because it is the tumor of the which cell it is a tumor of totipotent cell it's also a pyq huh totipotent cells are the cells which can differentiate in any of the three germ cell layer they can differentiate in ectoderm mesoderm as well as endoderm got my point the next question is in front of you what is hamartoma just now i told you is it a malignant tumor is it a metastatic tumor is it developmental malformation or is it hemorrhage inside the blood vessel what is hamartoma i told you two terminologies huh? can you try what is hamartoma what is choreostoma hmm hamartoma and choreostoma i told you hamartoma is abnormal tissue the tissue is abnormal at normal site the site is normal the site is normal in choreostoma opposite will happen here the site will become abnormal abnormal is site and tissue become normal so i i request you you have to learn what is abnormal if you try to learn both now you will get confused so i request you those students who are confused hamartoma may learn that tissue is abnormal what is abnormal learn that the other thing is obviously normal and so here tissue become malformed what is the abnormality the tissue become malformed it's a developmental malformation got it and in choreostoma the site is abnormal what is abnormality in site it's ectopic the site is ectopic that is the abnormality the other thing is normal of course got it so yes the tissue become disorganized and it is malformed but it is not dysplastic it is not anaplastic mind it also okay it's not a tumor both of them look like tumor looking at the suffix you feel like it's tumor it's a benign tumor or malign no it's not tumor so correct answer here is c coming on the next question ectopic rest of normal tissue what they are saying please mind it the tissue is absolutely normal but it's ectopic ectopic matlab what is the site the site is abnormal so normal tissue with abnormal site they are asking is it choreostoma is it hamartoma is it pseudo tumor is it lymphoma so what is the correct answer can anyone tell me what is the correct answer please yes absolutely right so the correct answer here is the choreostoma because they are asking you abnormal site in different different language i mean different different using words they are asking the same thing if your concept is clear now they use any words any language you can answer it okay your concept should be clear so you get many questions on hamartoma choreostoma okay these all are your pyqs only these are not new questions these are already asked in your different exams what is hamartoma the next question what is hamartoma is it proliferation of the cells in foreign site is it proliferation of the native cells in the tissue is it a malignant condition or is it acquired condition now please be very careful don't just rush don't jump tell me the correct answer have a thought then tell me the correct answer what is hamartoma is it proliferation of cell in foreign site or is it native native so i told you hamartoma is abnormal cell that is the malformation malformation mein kya hota hai there is proliferation of the native cells so cells are native only they are indigenous only the site is now normal but only thing that tissue become abnormal or malformed because of proliferation so i will go with b not c it is not malignant it is not acquired the site is never foreign no it's the same site the site is normal so correct answer here is b got it how many of you got it can we go ahead hmm can we go ahead so coming on the next topic till now we have covered only one topic the basics the definition of the neoplasia and the nomenclature of the neoplasia we have covered now we are coming on the next important topic the two main type of tumors benign and malignant why it is necessary to differentiate benign and malignant is it necessary my uh, query is what is the treatment of all tumor whether it is a benign tumor it is a malignant tumor if it is a tumor the treatment is surgery there is no drug in this world that can uh, you know uh, tumor ko it can replace like it can treat the tumor there is no drug you have to surgically remove that you have to surgically remove the extra growth the abnormal growth it will no go it will not go back once the cell have divided it is forming a mass you have to remove that mass surgically so you should ask me a question ma'am if the treatment of benign as well as malignant is surgery only why we have to differentiate whatever is the extra growth just remove it now being a surgeon 
uh, the surgeon should remove it. That's it. Why is the need of the pathologist or oncopathologist that they should differentiate whether the tumor is benign or malignant? Why? Why? Because the prognosis is different and treatment is different. If it is a benign tumor, na, it will not reoccur. It will not reoccur. The prognosis is very good. It will not reoccur again. Okay. The um, uh, growth is very slow. The symptoms are not there. Hai na? And uh, it will not reoccur. The main point. And surgery is the only treatment. That's it. Just remove it and it will not come back it is not going to come back okay but if it is a malignant tumor there is always a chance of recurrence there is always a chance of metastasis the prognosis is poor and along with the surgery you have to offer radiotherapy you have to offer chemotherapy you have to offer hormonal therapy you have to offer targeted therapy depending on the tumor to tumor so multiple approach treatment we will give hai na? we require a surgeon we require a radiotherapist we require a uh, oncologist to give the chemotherapy and a hormonal therapy targeted therapy and uh, the prognosis is not always very good depending on tumor to tumor stage to stage side to side to side so here staging and grading of the tumor is very important that will decide the treatment as well as prognosis so here i will teach you what is the grading of the tumor what is the staging of the tumor there are four grades there are four stage of course we all know stage one having the best prognosis and stage 4 having the worst prognosis stage 4 is al al already metastatic there is no cure for stage 4 okay so this is all regarding the malignant tumor so who differentiate benign and malignant who differentiate who does the uh, differentiation so there are five ways to differentiate benign tumors and malignant tumors we have to differentiate being a doctor the first thing if any patient coming to you doctor i am having a mass by mass i am having a you can say lesion anywhere in the body it's the extra growth anywhere in the body so it's a tumor simply it's a tumor it can be benign it can be malignant now technically from head to toe in any part of the body we have both type of tumors and benign also malignant also in brain also we have benign we have malignant and in thyroid also we have benign and malignant same same in all organs in lung also in breast also everywhere we have benign tumors as well as malignant tumors so how to differentiate them there are five ways to differentiate them First, we will see the rate of growth. Then we will see the clinical features. Then we will see the gross. Being a surgeon, being a surgeon, the part, the doctor will, the surgeon will remove that. So grossly looking at the tumor, we can have a judgment that whether it is, a, we can have a guess. I say it is benign or malignant. But these all things are not sure shot. These are not sure shot. If you want to say sure shot, sure shot is the spread of the tumor. Benign tumor do not spread. Malignant tumor always spread. Malignant tumor spread. So this is a short, short way to differentiate benign and malignant. But can we wait till stage? If my, if a patient is coming to you, doctor, I am having a growth somewhere in the body. If a lady is coming to you, doctor, I am having a breast. Uh, I am feeling a nodularity in the breast. Just suppose this lady is coming to you. So would you like to wait? metastasis If it is metastatic, it's malignant. If it, there is no metastatic, it's benign. So no, of course we cannot wait. So best, short, short way, the most reliable way to differentiate benign and malignant, I agree, is the spread of the tumor. But we cannot wait till that. So what we can do? We can do a biopsy here. Or anyway, we have to remove it now. So surgically remove that. Either do a biopsy or remove that and do the histopathology, the microscopic features. So I will tell you 10 microscopic features, which is known as anaplasia, right? That differentiates the benign and malignant on which maximum MCQs come in your exam. So we will see the five ways to differentiate the benign tumors from the malignant tumors one by one. The most detail of four and five we will see. One, two, three are not important. That just uh, giving a guess whether it is benign or malignant, but it is not sure shot. Okay. So first is rate of growth. Okay. So of course, benign tumors are slow growing. They are very slow growing. Hana? And malignant tumors are fast growing. So if any patient coming to you, doctor, I am having a growth anywhere in the body. I will say the same example. If any lady is coming to you, doctor, I am having a nodularity in any of the breast. Okay. So the first question you must ask from what time you are feeling it and what is the rate of its growth do you feel it's increasing very fast so the lady is saying no no doctor it's present since last two three years and uh, it's the same size now recently i i noticed little bit size is increased so more or less it's going to be convert to be benign hai na? on diagnosis it will be benign only and it may be fibroadenoma since it is present since last two three years but imagine a lady is coming to you doctor i am feeling a nodularity in my breast since last two months and the size is increasing very uh, very uh, fast so it is most probably it can be malignant. Exceptions are always there. It is not short, short way to differentiate benign and malignant. Now, what is doubling time? What do you mean by doubling time? Just suppose the tumor is one centimeter. From one centimeter to two centimeter, the time required by the tumor is known as doubling time. From two to four centimeter, the time required, the time required here, the time required here, it is known as doubling time. So can you tell me doubling time in the benign tumor? The doubling time in benign tumor will be more. 
and in benign tumor because they are very slow growing but in malignant tumor the doubling time will be very less because they very fast grow so they double very fast hai na so that's why doubling time will be less so this is the thing you have to ask regarding the doubling time you have to judge the doubling time based on that you can say whether the tumor is benign or malignant here mitotic rate is less slow growing doubling time is more and in malignant tumor the mitotic rate is fast doubling time is less so that is benign versus malignant tumor clinical features also based on that you can differentiate grossly you can say roughly i can say roughly you can say whether it is benign or malignant benign tumors are slow growing so they are usually asymptomatic but exceptions are always there <clears throat> you can see <clears throat> meningioma see the suffix oma oma so it is a benign tumor of the meninges ha na so sometime it produce uh, 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 seizures and it produce many other symptoms the focal neurological deficit can also occur so it's not always all benign tumors are asymptomatic i mean to say exceptions are there ha na and in malignant tumors they are rapidly growing so they can ulcerate deeply they can locally go deep in the tissue they can spread to other side metastasis so here and systemic features can be there like fever weight loss anorexia so these usually have the symptoms again exceptions are always there so this is also not a good way to differentiate benign and malignant the third is the gross based on the gross looking at the gross of the tumor gross is the morphological appearance external appearance of the tumor is the gross so benign tumors you can see the benign tumors are usually spherical and oval the malignant tumors are irregular in shape you can see both are the breast tumors this is fibroadenoma and this is invasive carcinoma of the breast ductal carcinoma of the breast both are breast tumors but you can see this one is well circumscribed the capsule is also present the margins i can see the oval or spherical in shape and this one you can see irregular in shape infiltrating everywhere in the tissue infiltrating i cannot make out the exact shape it's irregular in shape infiltrating everywhere no capsule no boundaries okay so this one is spherical oval capsule is present freely movable this is irregular poorly circumscribed no capsule and extend into the tissue it is deeply extending into the tissue right now please take one one word in both let me explain you the one one word it to compress the surrounding tissue it invades the surrounding tissue how many of you understand the meaning of the compression and invasion This one is compression. Compression, यानी धकेलना. ये surrounding tissue को धकेलता जाएगा. As as bigger and bigger and bigger, the benign tumor will occur. It will compress the surrounding tissue. It will compress the surrounding tissue. And malignant will infiltrate inside the tissue. It will infiltrate more and more and more deeper inside the tissue. वो उसके अंदर घुसेगा. ये धकेलेगा, ये घुसेगा. You got my point? So this will compress, this will invade. So that is grossly you can notice. Okay. So this also the microscopic features you can see. The benign tumors, they have a boundary. They are well circumscribed. and here they don't have circumcision they are infiltrating we can see the margins infiltrating deep so that is the gross now coming on the most important point microscopic feature from histopathology of point of view how you can differentiate benign tumor versus malignant tumor now i am a histopathologist if you are a surgeon imagine you are sending any growth to me you have done a surgery and you are sending any specimen to me ha na this specimen is growth i will call it a growth i will not call it benign growth or malignant growth till it's confirmed so you called me that ma'am i'm sending a growth to you i have operated a patient it's a breast uh, growth in the breast i'm not sure whether it is benign or malignant have look and tell me okay so what i will do i will cut the specimen i will fix it i will make a slide now in the slide it's my responsibility to tell you the report whether it is benign or malignant based on my report if i say benign you will say you will consult the patient that surgery is already done or it's the biopsy so, so we will do the surgery and surgery is the only treatment don't worry it's benign it's not going to reoccur again the prognosis is very good the only treatment is surgery that's it but if i say it's malignant in my report this is biopsy and if i say malignant so you will consult the patient uh, we have to do the surgery we have to give the chemo we have to give the radio we have to give the hormonal therapy targeted therapy depending what type of tumor exactly it is right and it can reoccur ha na the prognosis may be good may not be good depending on the stage we have to do the grading we have to do the staging so it's malignant right so it's the onus of the pathologist which will give you whether the tumor is benign or malignant now how does the pathologist decide whether the tumor is benign or, or malignant based on the features of anaplasia i will look for 10 features of anaplasia so in in benign tumors anap anaplasia is absent in malignant tumors the anaplasia is present anaplasia is a hallmark of malignant tumor i repeat my words i repeat my sentence anaplasia is a hallmark you have to learn it's a hallmark of malignant tumor you may be thinking ma'am ye anaplasia hota kya hai what do you mean by anaplasia there are 10 features in that i will explain you all the 10 features one by one 
So let's come on the next term, anaplasia. What do you mean by anaplasia? The lack of differentiation is known as anaplasia. Now you will say, ma'am, for differentiation, kya hota hai? If you want to understand anaplasia, you have to understand differentiation. Okay. Can you see this is normal tissue? Let's say any tissue. Let's say it's um, skin. Okay. Skin. So you can say this is normal skin. Can you see these cells I'm drawing with red color? These are the normal, normal cells. Okay. These all are normal. This is basal epithelia and these are the cells, normal cells of any tissue. Here also the normal cells of that tissue and in that tissue the tumor occurs. So these are the tumor cells. Can you see these all the blue cells are the tumor cells. These are the tumor cells. So in this tissue I can see two type of cells. The normal cells of that tissue and the tumor cells of that tissue. Hannah, this tissue have a tumor. The tissue can be any tissue from head to toe in human body. Right. Now these tumor cells how much they resemble. Please mind my words. How much they resemble with the normal cells. That is known as differentiation. Differentiation is the degree of resemblance. Kitna resemble karta hai, kitna percent. So these tumor cells are more or less, they are looking like normal cell only. So I will say the tumor is well differentiated. And if not at all, they are looking like the normal cells. They are entirely different. All the features are entirely different. I will say the tumor is poorly differentiate, differentiated. So we have well differentiated, moderate differentiated, poorly differentiated tumors based on the differentiation. Right. So absence of differentiation is anaplasia. Anaplasia matlab jo tumor cells hai wo normal native cells se kitne alag hai. Jitne alag hai utna anaplasia zada hai. Aur anaplasia matlab malignancy. Right. So the tumor cell the more they differ from the native cell huh? the more anaplastic they become and chances of malignancy are more. You got my point. That is anaplasia. So lack of differentiation is presence of anaplasia. If differentiation is absent it means anaplasia is present. Got my point. So differentiation is the extent of morphological and functional resemblance of the tumor cell with the normal cell. Tumor cell and normal cell, how much they resemble with each other, right? So if they resemble completely with each other, I mean, let's say about percentage, 90% of them, they resemble with each other. I will say the tumor is well differentiated, okay? If 50% of them, 50%, 50 to 75% of them, they resemble, I will say it's moderately differentiated. If 25 to 50% of them, they resemble with each other, it's poorly differentiated. And if less than 5% or less than 10% only resemble, it's undifferentiated. So based on the differentiation, we classify, this is borders classification. We classify the tumors like that. Now, what is anaplasia? You got it. This is lack of differentiation. Say yes. What is anaplasia? Write down, it's lack of differentiation. So I told you anaplasia is the hallmark of malignancy, not benign. And it's always irreversible. Once it occurs, it cannot reverse. These are the 10 features I am talking about. Anaplasia. That will differentiate from benign to malignant. So if you are sending any growth to me. I am a pathologist. I will make a slide. And in the slide I will look for these 10 features. If the 10 features are present. It's malignant. If they are absent. It's benign. Crystal clear concept. Hana. But it's not always black and white in this world. There is grey. Hana. And grey will give you trouble. Got my point. So uh, in day to day routine practice, I tell you, I see many slides, I see many um, histopathology like this. And also sometimes we get confused. Maybe five features of are present, five are absent. So sometimes we are not very sure whether it is benign or malignant. Now what is more dangerous according to you? Hana, if we are doing a mistake saying benign to malignant or malignant to benign, both both are mistakes. Hana, both are mistakes which cannot be forgiven, but which is more deadly. Huh? If there is a benign tumor and by mistake I am saying it's malignant, unnecessarily the patient patient will get chemo, radio and side effects of all that, unnecessary a prolonged treatment and always the patient will be in psychological trauma anytime I can have recurrence, right? And if you give malignant as benign, the patient will not get treatment, the patient will be under treated, only surgery will be done, radio chemo will not given and definitely patient will present directly with stage 4, the metastasis. So you can see both the mistakes are not at allowed, not at all, all allowed. So if, if being a pathologist, I say if I get confused in any case, if it is not completely black, completely white, if it is grey, so always better to take multiple advices from the seniors, the experienced person, what is your thought. So, you know, sometimes there is transformation. It is not always all the features are present in one specimen. That is my point. So let me explain you the 10 features of anaplasia. Let me explain you what are the 10 features of anaplasia. Kindly respond. You are getting it. Write down something in the chat. You are getting it or didn't get it. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Just a second. Let me... Okay, yes. So can we can we go ahead? Are you people there? So let's start the 10 features of the anaplasia. Here in the diagram, you can see two diagrams. In the two diagrams, what you can see? You can see this is the basement membrane. Let me draw here. This is normal basement membrane. And this is the cells on the basement membrane. This is a normal tissue. This is a normal tissue. And on the other side, you can see it's anaplastic tissue. Anaplastic tissue, right? Here also, you can see the basement membrane and the cell. The first thing is the 
basal polarity you have to look for what do you mean by basal polarity let me draw here also the same diagram this is the basement membrane i am drawing and these are the cells of the normal tissue i am drawing right and here i am drawing anaplasia i am trying to draw anaplasia here right the same diagram i am replicating here where is the nucleus normally of all the cells of all the cells the nucleus is not in the center the nucleus is always towards the basement membrane it's a normal thing in a normal tissue the nucleus is towards the basement membrane it's not in the center it's not towards away from the basement membrane it's towards the base, basement membrane this is known as basal polarity basal matlab basement membrane polarity means us pole ki taraf hai polarity hai na polarity north pole south pole so it's towards the base basement membrane pole basal polarity is always present normally but in anaplasia whenever there is a malignancy the nucleus is away from the basement membrane the nucleus become, become bigger in size the cell will become bigger in size and nucleus is more or less away from the basement membrane so basal polarity is lost in anaplasia and malignancy basal polarity is lost so if you are giving me any slide and if you are asking me ma'am it's a growth please have a look whether it's benign or malignant the first thing i will look for the basal polarity where are the nucleus of all the cell it is towards the basement membrane or away from the basement membrane the first thing i will look for that in the slide hana this is known as basal polarity so loss of basal polarity is malignancy presence of basal polarity is normal okay so this is the thing so this is basal polarity you can make it out normally basal polarity is present but if it is lost if it is lost it's anaplasia you can see here the nucleus is towards the basement membrane in all these cells but here it's away away from the basement membrane ha it's not towards the basement membrane so basal polarity is lost the second is the pleomorphism what do you mean by pleomorphism pleomorphism means the shape and size of all cell here i can see all the cells are same shape same size i repeat all the cells are same shape same size but here in anaplasia what you can see in anaplasia you can see the cells are of different shape different size some are small some are normal some are enlarged so this is pleomorphism so normally pleomorphism absent but in malignancy in anaplasia it's present in anaplasia pleomorphism is present the third thing we will see same of the nucleus hai na we have seen now cell ka shape and size ab see nucleus ka same shape and size here nucleus is also same shape same size but here some nucleus are small some are large some are multiple so here an isonucleosis is absent here an isonucleosis is present don't learn the term don't learn pathology is very easy subject listen i'm saying a term an isonucleosis now students say ki mam uska matlab kya hai itna bada term hai split it split it whenever you don't get anything split it and understand the term an means no hai na iso means is equal to is equal to and nucleosis means size of nucleus size of nucleus now please understand ha huh? no equal size of the nucleus this nucleus of multiple cell is not equal in size this is the meaning of this term so is an isonucleosis is present normally no all the nucleus are same na so an isonucleosis is not there but in malignancy in anaplasia an isonucleosis is present some nucleus are small some are large so change in size is present got my point the term is an isonucleosis combine it an isonucleosis ha huh? it is like that got it so can we go ahead now see the chromatin inside the nucleus here the chromatin ka color see the color color here can you see the blue color all of them are blue color but here chromatin become compact in anaplasia it become compact so nucleus become dark color dark color in pathologic color ko kehte hain chroma chroma ka matlab hota hai color dictionary meaning chroma you can search chroma meaning of chroma it's color hai na so normally it's normochromic chroma is normal but here in malignancy in anaplasia it's hyperchroma hyperchromia is there hai na because of the chromatin become compact so hyperchromatism is present here here it's normal chroma the chroma is normal here here hyperchromatism is there we have seen the nucleus ka size we have seen the nucleus ka color now we will talk about the next term nc ratio what is nc ratio nucleus cytoplasmic ratio hai na nucleus aur cytoplasm ka ratio let's draw normal cell two three normal cells and let's draw two three anaplastic cells hai na so let's draw the nucleus here let's draw nucleus here nucleus here let's draw nucleus here which is away from the basement membrane ha huh, na no? you can see which is dark which is big and away from the basement membrane so what is nc ratio take the size of the nucleus and take the size of the cytoplasm the ratio the numerator is the nucleus the denominator is the cytoplasm the size of the two that is known as nc ratio so here we all can see nucleus is less and cytoplasm is more so nc ratio the normal nc ratio is there ha na and here you can see the nucleus increases in size disproportionate as compared to cytoplasm cytoplasm is also increasing i say but nucleus is increasing more disproportionate to that of cytoplasm so here overall the numerator increases more denominator do not increase more so overall nc ratio will be high so if we take nc ratio both the places here the nc ratio is low here nc ratio is high 
Got it? Now what is nucleoli? Inside the nucleus we have dot like structures nucleoli. Here we don't find any nucleoli. But here you can see we have multiple nucleoli. You can see nucleoli are very prominent here. Very prominent here. What about mitosis? Here we don't find any mitosis. Here we can see the spindle separation. Can you see the spindles? The spindles. Mitosis is very frequent because these cells are going to be abnormal cell division. Abnormal cell division is very frequent mitosis. Here we don't have any giant cell. One cell, one nucleus. Here giant cells are very frequent. In one cell you can get multiple nucleus. Giant cells are very frequent in anaplasia. Got my point? Here cytoplasm is normal pink color. Eosinophilic. Here cytoplasm contains the mucin. So it is bluish color. Not pink. That is cytoplasm. And if you check the karyotyping, if you check the genetic level, here diploidy is there. Diploidy means 46 chromosome, 23 pairs. Here aneuploidy will be there. Aneuploidy will be very common here. It's not 46 chromosome. Maybe more, maybe less. Aneuploidy is there because of the mutations. Got my point? So these are the 10 features. Can we can we say, you know, in this diagram, what you can see? Appreciate the mitosis here. Abnormal mitosis. Appreciate. Huh? Here, please see. This is abnormal mitosis. And uh, you can see and isocytosis you can see pleomorphism some cells are small some are large so looking at the slide itself i can see it's a frank malignancy it's a frank malignancy. if i say all the 10 features the nucleus is away from the basement membrane here basement membrane is not visible i can see the giant cells i can see cross pleomorphism the some cells are small some are very large the nucleus size is also variable i can see mitosis i can see giant cells it's a malignancy you can see this is the giant cell so these are the real diagrams i am showing you listen now this is you can see the female genital tract in uh, in in this diagram now imagine there is a female having some complaint like uh, menstrual complaints manorrhagia some complaints now you are doing a sonography in the sonography in the uterus you get a mass now this is a mass in the uterus this is also a mass in the uterus oh, no now, is it benign or malignant i mean to ask is it leomyoma or leomyosarcoma Leomyoma is the benign tumor of the uterus. Leomyosarcoma is the malignant tumor of the uterus. Now see how beautiful is the diagram. Looking at the gross, you can see this is circle, this is oval, this is this is the borders are well encapsulated. You can make the boundaries. So grossly also this one is benign. And this one you can see irregular in shape, infiltrating around. So this one is malignant. But gross is a rough criteria. We cannot say confirm. So let's do the biopsy of both of them. So this is the biopsy picture here. This is the biopsy picture here. Have a look on both the biopsy picture and apply the 10 features of the neoplasia. In the right hand side, you can see here. Some cells are small, some are large. Pleomorphism is there. I can see giant cell also. I can see mitosis also very frequent. So of course this one is malignant all these features are absent here I will say this one is benign so this is how we differentiate the benign from the malignant say yes if you got it got it huh what are the 10 features can you tell me the 10 features of anaplasia how we will differentiate the benign from the malignant so tell me the 10 features of metaplasia tell me what is normal and tell me what is anaplasia based on what you will say anaplasia so the first thing the first property is the basal polarity the second property is the pleomorphism then you have to tell me an isonucleosis. Okay. Then you have to tell me the chroma of the nucleus. Then you have to tell me NC ratio. Then you have to tell me the mitosis inside the nucleus. Then the giant cells present or absent. Anna, you have to tell me regarding the cytoplasm. And you have to tell me the chromosomal abnormality. Anna, I don't know how many I can recall. Basal polarity, normally it's present. But in anaplasia it becomes absent. Pleomorphism, normally it's absent. But in anaplasia it becomes present. Anisonucleosis, normally it's absent. In anaplasia, it becomes present. Chroma, normally it's normochromic. The color of the nucleus is normal. But in anaplasia, it becomes hyperchromic. You have to understand these terms, hyperchromic. Hana. NC ratio, normally, NC ratio is low. Hana. Nucleus is small, cytoplasm is more. Numerator come here, denominator is more. That's why overall ratio is less. But in anaplasia, nucleus is more enlarged as compared to cytoplasm so numerator is more as compared to denominator mitosis we don't get here we get abnormal mitosis very frequently giant cell we don't get here here we get giant cell very frequently cytoplasm is eosinophilic here pink color here cytoplasm contain mucin abundant of mucin and a bluish tinges there and here it's diploidy Hannah? and here it's aneuploidy so please count the 10 features how many of you can get it how many of you can get it? The 10 features of the anaplasia. Can we go ahead? Huh? Can we go ahead? And last feature, last, we have seen the uh, rate of growth. We have seen the gross. We have seen the clinical features. We have seen the microscopy. The fifth feature which differentiate benign from malignant is the spread of the tumor. Based on the spread of tumor, we decide 
whether the tumor is benign or whether the tumor is malignant. So this is the last feature. Then I will show you a difference table between the benign and malignant tumor and we will solve many MCQs based on that. Okay. So there are two types of spread of the tumor. Let me show you. Let me draw a diagram for you to explain the two types of the spread of the tumor. Just imagine this is a human body and uh, okay. Let's say the tumor is in the stomach. For an example, a rough sketch diagram. For example, the tumor is in stomach here. Okay, you can see this is the stomach tumor, gastric carcinoma is there. Now, gastric carcinoma will enlarge. It's malignant. It's malignant. It will enlarge, enlarge, enlarge. It will infiltrate. After infiltrating, it involves the adjoining tissue. Adjoining tissue, it is involving the pancreas. It is involving the spleen. And one by one, all the adjoining. It is it is involving the intestine also. Hannah, it is involving multiple organs. But the point is that in continuity. But the point is that in continuity it is involving all. This is known as local invasion. What it is known as? Local invasion. It is going on continuous, continuous, continuous growth. Sometimes what happens? Sometimes what happens? It comes out. A, a few tumor cells comes out and enters in the blood vessels or lymphatic vessels. Via blood vessels and lymphatic vessels, they uh, move in multiple organs and they form multiple secondaries in multiple organs like in brain, like in bones, like in liver, multiple. The secondaries are discontinuous with the main tumor, primary. So this is known as distant. This one is known as distant metastasis. Distant metastasis. This one was local. This one is distant. The distant one is known as metastasis. Metastasis. My point is that metastasis may, the multiple tumors which are formed, the secondaries which are formed, these are known as secondaries. They are discontinuous with the primary. They are discontinuous with the primary. So we have two types of uh, uh, spread of the tumor. The local spread and the distant spread. Local spread ko kya kehte hain? What do we call local spread? Local spread is in continuity and distant spread is not continuous, it's discontinuous. The local spread is known as invasion and the distant spread is known as metastasis. Local is in continuity and distant is discontinuous. Got my point? Now my point is that, my point, listen, listen very carefully. Both the things are absent in benign and both the things are present in malignant. Don't get confused. Asa nahi hai. Many students confuse ki mein local wala benign mein hota hai aur distant wala malignant mein hota hai. No, 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 no. Both the things are absent in benign. Benign tumor never spread locally, never spread distantly. No, they don't spread at all. They just sub, uh, compress the surrounding tissue. They don't go from one tissue to another. If the tumor, there is a benign tumor in the stomach, it will remain in stomach only. It cannot go to intestine, spleen and pancreas. No, locally also and distantly also. It cannot. Hana? And both the things can occur in malignant. Got my point? So both the things... Both the things are absent in benign, both the things are present in malignant. So local invasion and distant invasion, both are absent in benign, both are present in both are present in malignant. You can see the same thing. Can you see the background purple color? That's normal tissue. And can you see the red color? The red color is the tumor you can see. So first tumor is spreading locally, 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 involving all the tissue locally, locally. So this is local invasion. After that, a few tumor cells are coming in the blood vessel. Can you see a few tumor cells are leaving the tumor and coming in the blood? Via blood, they are traveling, traveling, traveling and going to another tissue and forming multiple secondaries there in the body. So this is secondary. Got my point? So this is how. So my point is that local invasiveness as well as metastasis the two things both of them are important feature to distinguish benign and malignant benign tumors neither local nor metastasis malignant tumor show local invasion as well as metastasis both the things are absent in benign both the things are present in malignant please take a word Hana. now out of these the metastasis is the most reliable feature to differentiate benign from malignant and the local invasion is the second row uh, or second best reliable sign to differentiate benign from malignant. You got my point. I told you there are five ways to differentiate benign from malignant. See, the five ways are in front of you. Let me help you in revision quickly. The difference between benign, let's make two column. Benign and malignant. Let's say this is benign. Let's say this is malignant. Can you tell me? Can you tell me the differences based on rate of growth? The benign tumors are slow growing. The malignant tumors are fast growing. The first thing you have to ask your patient if any patient is coming to you, doctor, I am having a growth anywhere in the body. The first thing you have to ask the speed at which it is growing. Hana? And that depends on the doubling time. So here doubling time is more and here doubling time is less. I told you what is doubling time. Theek hai? Clinical features benign are usually asymptomatic. Usually. Exceptions are there. And malignants are usually symptomatic. I use the word usually. Again, exceptions are there. Hana? I told you the exceptions also. Meningioma is a benign tumor but sometimes it produces severe symptoms. Got it. Based on gross, benign are circular, oval, with well margins, encapsulated, and it's uh, uh, compressed the surrounding tissue. Malignant are irregular in shape, infiltrating around. 
है ना सो दैट इज ग्रॉस बेस्ड ऑन द माइक्रोस्कोपी वी हैव सीन टेन फीचर्स यू नो द टेन फीचर्स नाउ बेसल पोलैरिटी है ना बेसल पोलैरिटी प्लियोमोर्फिजम एन आइसो न्यूक्लियोसिस माइटोसिस क्रोमा एन सी रेशियो ऑल दीज सो वॉट ऑल दीज थिंग्स आर एबसेंट हियर एंड वॉट ऑल दीज थिंग्स आर प्रेजेंट हियर यू नो सो दिस इज एनाप्लेशिया इन शॉर्ट आई विल से एनाप्लेशिया इज एबसेंट हियर एंड एनाप्लेशिया इज प्रेजेंट हियर द एनाप्लेशिया इज द क्लस्टर ऑफ दोज टेन थिंग्स that is microscopy right lastly lastly most important there are two types of spread the local spread and distant spread local spread and distant spread both are absent in benign and both are present in malignant you got my point now you we can differentiate the benign tumor from the malignant tumor based on the five points but my question is what is the most reliable sign to differentiate benign and malignant i know there are five ways but tell me one which is the most reliable and tell me the second most reliable do question do answer so you got my point ha huh? most reliable is metastasis absence of metastasis and presence of metastasis so metastasis is the most reliable feature which differentiate benign and malignant but be, being a doctor we cannot wait till the stage metastasis if any patient is coming to me doctor i am having a growth i cannot say wait we will see if metastasis occurs it's malignant we will give the chemo and if it doesn't occur it's benign so we cannot wait till that come on ha na we have to treat the patient we we wish our patient never have metastasis we have to treat it before that ha na the second most reliable sign is local invasion ha na local invasion also absent in benign and present in metastasis we cannot uh, wait till this also so best feature based on which we can decide whether the tumor is benign or malignant in practically it's microscopy so based on the microscopy the histopathology we will see anaplasia absent or present based on that we will decide whether the tumor is um, benign or malignant and we will start the treatment according to that got my point but rate of growth clinical feature and gross features these are just rough criteria to differentiate benign and malignant how many of you got it can we solve some questions now how many of you got it ha huh? can we start are you people there hmm okay just a second so please give me the answers ha na okay before that have a look on this table we have already discussed so we can see here this is benign tumor this is malignant tumor so based on the clinical feature and the gross so here in benign it is capsulated it is non capsulated this one is oval this one is irregular this one compresses the surrounding tissue this one invades the surrounding tissue this is small this is large this do not produce any secondary change this produce the secondary change all the features of the anaplasia you know the features i am not repeating they all are absent in benign and they all are present in malignant the 10 features of anaplasia ha na they are absent in benign and present in uh, malignant uh based on growth of rate uh growth rate i mean here the benign one are slow and the malignant one are fast local invasion metastasis both are absent in benign and both are present in malignant and this is the most reliable sign this is the second most reliable sign prognosis here local complications are there here metastasis and death so prognosis not very good so let's solve some mcqs based on that the first question is in front of you tell me the answer lack of differentiation is known as what is lack of dif differentiation is it anaplasia dysplasia metaplasia or hyperplasia Now the suffix of all of them is plasia, 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 plasia. What is lack of differentiation? I explained you the meaning of lack of differentiation. Yes, you all are right. Very good. The lack of differentiation is known as anaplasia. Anaplasia is lack of differentiation. Right. The second question is in front of you. Reversible loss of polarity. The reversible loss of polarity with the abnormality in size and shape of the cells is known as. Now the question is little bit difficult, but you try. Then I will give you the explanation. Is it metaplasia? Is it dysplasia? Is it hyperplasia or anaplasia? Huh? What is what is correct answer among them? So they are saying loss of polarity is there. Abnormality in shape of the cell and size of the cell is there. I mean they are saying pleomorphism is there. Loss of polarity is there. Anisonucleosis is there. So these are the properties of anaplasia. Now I forget to tell you the ten features I told you. Now now what are the ten features I told you? Now many features. Basal polarity is lost. Now now anisonucleosis is there. Uh, hyperchromatism is there nc ratio is increased mitosis present giant cell present mucin present all these are the 10 features of the new uh, anaplasia the same features are present in dysplasia also dysplasia and anaplasia have 10 same features you will say ma'am but how we differentiate then anaplasia and dysplasia my point is that dysplasia is reversible anaplasia is irreversible ha na the 10 features you see if it is reversible it's dysplasia it is pre malignant it is not malignant and if they are reversible they are irreversible they have already invaded the basement membrane and they are irreversible it's anaplasia now have a look on your question and tell me the answer does anyone want to change your answer i'm saying reversible i'm using the word reversible here so i will go with dysplasia i will go with dysplasia if i change the question currently answer is dysplasia because i'm saying reversible but if i change the question from reversible the same question with irreversible i changed only one word in the question my answer will become anaplasia 
in that case my answer will become anaplasia so a very good question in which most of the students get confused right so please your concept should be very clear got it now coming on the next question not next question coming on the next must topic most important topic to understand metastasis I told you already what is metastasis metastasis is the distant spread distant spread of the tumor so there is one primary tumor it's malignant tumor the one primary tumor is the malignant tumor it is forming multiple discontinuous secondaries throughout the body multiple discontinuous word is highlighted highlight the word discontinuous here I know if it is discontinuous then only I will call it metastasis so multiple discontinuous secondaries are formed in the entire body it is known as metastasis it is the most reliable feature to differentiate the benign tumor from the malignant tumor now how does metastasis occurs we have to see the steps and we have to see the roots okay so, there are many questions of metastasis I know and being if you are going to practice oncology and uh, practice any branch you must understand the metastasis in detail very well okay there is no cure of metastasis till now the research the discoveries are going on the day we can find a drug which is curing the metastasis we will win stage 4 tumors also currently all the stage 4 tumors are metastatic and there is no treatment available for them we give only palliative treatment there is no cure ek bar stage 4 ho gaya to koi cure hi nahi hai bas we give palliative to prolong the life and increase the quality in the life so there is no cure of the metastasis ha na in metastasis there are multiple uh, secondaries are formed na as i told you that this is a person this is a person let me tell you the roots there are three roots of metastasis now imagine the person is having again the same tumor i am saying the person is having the tumor in the stomach the gastric carcinoma for example the person is having now here some of the tumor cells they can either come in the blood vessel just a second or they can come in the lymphatic or they can come so they can spread to multiple organs via blood vessel they can spread to multiple organ via lymphatics hai na or they should they just shed in the cavity the abdominal cavity hai na peritoneal cavity you can say hai na so there are three routes by which they can go to multiple organs via blood also they will go to multiple organs and form multiple discontinuous secondary via lymphatics also they go to multiple organs and form multiple discontinuous secondary and via the cavity also they will just float in the cavity and all the organs present in that cavity in the cavity we have multiple organs now we have liver also kidney also genitals also so they can involve multiple organ so there are three roots i mean what are the three roots i told you what are the three roots the first via blood most common it is hematogenous root the second lymphatics this is lymphatic root hai na and third via cavity it is known as transcelomic root celom celom matlab cavity transcelomic root so there are three roots via which the primary tumor will spread and form multiple secondaries in the body the malignant tumor we are talking not the benign tumor got it got it uh, so this is the thing so uh, uh, the benign uh, the malignant tumor spread and form multiple secondaries via three root the hematogenous root via blood the lymphatic root via lymphatics and transcelomic root via the cavities and multiple secondaries are formed now what is the treatment the treatment you cannot take out every organ now if it is in brain we cannot cut the brain if it is in bone we cannot cut the multiple how many and if you cut the tumor cells are already present in blood or lymphatic they will form multiple more there is no treatment available the no treatment available okay we will just give the palliative therapy got my point so this is the basics of metastasis let's start metastasis so do you think all the malignant tumors metastasize benign tumors do not metastasize i know that do you think all malignant tumors metastasize yes all malignant tumors except two there are two malignant tumors which never show metastasis that is glioma of the cns brain gliomas and basal cell carcinoma of the skin the rodent ulcer which occurs here near the nose in the tear line you know that ha na rodent ulcer basal cell carcinoma of the skin usually occur over the face i mean ha na so glioma of the brain and basal cell carcinoma of the skin they are malignant tumor so you say ma'am it should metastasize if i look their slide na the features of anaplasia are present all 10 features of anaplasia are present so they are not benign they are malignant morphologically so they should show the metastasis now but till date we have not found even a one case of metastasis whether we give the treatment or do not give the treatment they remain locally there they do not show metastasis so there are two exceptions glioma of the cns and basal cell carcinoma they are malignant tumor but they don't show metastasis pe bahut pyq hai i told you examiner always love exceptions you have to learn the exceptions everywhere whenever there is exception you have to learn it very well got my point so gliomas of the brain and basal cell carcinoma these are metas mal malignant but don't show metastasis now the roots of the metastasis i already discussed three roots the blood root is hematogenous via blood it is spreading to multiple organs via lymphatic it is spreading to multiple organs it's lymphatic root hai na and transcelomic is via cavity hai na so transcelomic is very rare i will explain you in the end blood and lymphatic are common so which which tumor will spread via which root 
विच ट्यूमर विल स्प्रेड वाई आर विच रूट विच ट्यूमर तो वी हैव टू टाइप्स ऑफ ट्यूमर्स ना आई टोल्ड यू द क्लासिफिकेशन द नॉमन क्लेचर द मलिग्नेंट ट्यूमर्स आर ऑफ टू टाइप्स द सार्कोमाज एंड कार्सिनोमाज मलिग्नेंट ट्यूमर्स अराइजिंग फ्रॉम द मीजन काइमा और सार्कोमा द मलिग्नेंट ट्यूमर अराइजिंग फ्रॉम द इपिथीलिया और कार्सिनोमा तो सार्कोमा एंड कार्सिनोमा आर द टू टाइप ऑफ द ट्यूमर्स ओके सो माई पॉइंट इज दैट ऑल कार्सिनोमा स्प्रेड बाय लिम्फेटिक रूट and sarcoma spread by hematogenous root usually they spread like that so carcinomas means the tumors arising from the epithelial epithelial uh, tissue they spread via lymphatic wo lymphatic ke through jayenge aur sarcomas which arise from the mesenchymal root they spread via blood hai na transcellomic is very rare that we will describe in the end but otherwise two roots are common right you can see here in this diagram let me show you the meaning of this diagram in this diagram you can understand this is a tumor this is a tumor okay so the cells of the tumor will come out some cells so where they are going either they are spreading via the blood you can see this is the blood so some tumor cells will go in the blood and spread everywhere in the body like this or they will go in the lymphatics and via lymphatics they will spread everywhere now it depends whether the tumor is sarcoma it will spread via blood and if it is carcinoma it will spread via lymphatic how many of you got it how many of you got it can we go ahead so this is the basics you must learn on which many questions come let's describe the three routes one by one let's start first with lymphatic then we will go on the blood route hematogenous and finally the third one we will go on uh, transcellomic so let's start with the lymphatic i told you carcinoma spread by lymphatic is pe bahut pyq hai don't underestimate it huh? please learn it very uh, carefully so coming on the lymphatics what do you mean by a lymphatic so what is the difference between lymphatic and uh, just say this is a tumor So where is the blood vessel? Let me draw a blood vessel for this tumor. This is the blood vessel I am drawing. It's a continuous, hollow, luminated structure which is lined by the endothelial cells. This is a blood vessel. You all can see. This is a blood vessel. Okay. Now let me draw a lymphatic for you. Let me draw. So this is lymphatic I am drawing. In the lymphatic, it's same as that of blood vessel only. It's luminated structure. It is also lined by the endothelial cell. But the only thing. but the only difference you can see i have drawn it is having lymph nodes in between these are the lymph nodes which are coming one by one in sequence okay the only thing it is also a luminated structure hollow structure uh, lined by an um, endothelial cell this is a lymphatic right now i'm saying the tumor cell can spread via this also that i will discuss later on currently i'm desc describing the uh, uh, lim lymphatic route so tumor cells are coming in the some of the tumor cells are coming in the lymphatic and going and involving multiple organs reaching to multiple organs but my point is that here one by one lymph node will come on the way so one by one lymph node will also convert metastatic here hai na so via lymphatic route lymphatics are also involved lymph nodes are also involved i mean the lymph nodes are there in blood vessel we don't have lymph nodes it's only blood vessel but in lymphatic vessel we have lymph nodes in between so the first lymph node na is known as sentinel lymph node what is the first lymph node it is known as pehla lymph node jo raste mein aa raha hai on the way the first lymph node which is coming it is known as sentinel lymph node it's very important i will tell you the relevance of the sentinel lymph node on which you get many questions first understand har har cheez ko samajhna hai we don't have to mug up the things we have to understand the things got my point i told you that sarcomas uh, i'm i'm sorry carcinoma spread via uh, hematogenous root and sarcoma spread via lymphatic root so let's start the lymphatic root lymphatic root mein lymph nodes are involved so the regional lymph nodes are involved so the regional lymph nodes in case of breast cancer these are axillary lymph nodes so whenever there is a breast cancer we always remove together axillary lymph node also this is a reason hai na whenever there is a lung tumor we always remove the paratracheal and perihilar lymph nodes that is the reason because these are the regional lymph nodes so we assume that tumor cells have already travel through the lymphatics and these are the one by one regional lymph nodes which are coming on the way so we should remove them so this is the regional lymph nodes are there the natural route we have to see in the lymphatic and the regional lymph nodes which are coming that are also involved the first lymph node is known as sentinel lymph node imagine i am a surgeon and this patient is coming to me hai right? na this patient is having a nodularity in the breast she is feeling since last few months it is growing very rapidly so what the first thing i will do i will say okay we will do a biopsy and we see what's it's it's benign or malignant so immediately i performed a biopsy in the biopsy unfortunately it's malignant it's converted into malignant in the biopsy the 10 features of the anaplasia are present and the pathologist reported it's malignant so patient is coming to me again with the report doctor this is my biopsy report tell what us we have to do further so it's a malignant tumor i will say it's a malignant tumor we have to do the surgery now in the surgery what i am going to remove what i am going to remove of course i am going to remove the tumor but what about uh, the lymph node uh, should we remove the lymph node also yes or no i'm asking you so in the surgery we have two types of breast surgery the lumpectomy and the mastectomy depending on the size of the tumor if the tumor is of small size concised hai na and removing only tumor is lumpectomy 
so removing only tumor the two sides the breast is still equivalent we remove only tumor but if the tumor is very big in size so after removing the in the tumor hardly any parenchyma is left in the breast so better to remove the entire breast that is known as mastectomy so that is a call taken by the surgeon there are many criteria to decide whether we have to do the lumpectomy or mastectomy it's okay so it's out of the point at your at your level but understand breast, breast surgery definitely we are going to do the lumpectomy or um, mastectomy whatever but whether we are going to remove the lymph node yes or no I'm asking you, it's a carcinoma, no? It's a carcinoma. So it's spread by a lymphatic. We know carcinoma spread by a lymphatic. And the regional lymphatics are the axillary lymph nodes. So what to do? What to do? So you will see, ma'am, just remove it. Are these vestigial organ? Huh? Lymph nodes are not vestigial organ in the body. What is their purpose? They prevent edema. Anna? The extra fluid anywhere in the body is taken by the lymphatics. Anna? They prevent edema. They prevent edema. You may have read this in the general pathology. Huh? So they prevent edema. So if I remove all the lymph nodes, now the patient will have lymphoedema in this arm throughout the life. I don't have diagram. Lymphoedema. The entire arm will swell. And it's a morbidity of the surgery. Because of the surgery, it is having not due to cancer. Just because I have removed the lymph nodes throughout the life, she will have lymphoedema in that particular arm. The complete arm will be swelled. But it's a morbidity. So unnecessarily why I should give morbidity to my patient the patient is young 25 year old throughout the life she will have a lymphoedema for that she has to take the treatment and all the things so unnecessarily we do not want to remove that I mean to say it's risk and benefit judgment and now you have to balance if it is involved I want to remove but if it is not involved I do not want to remove I do not want to give unnecessary uh, morbidity to my patient what should I do what should I do you should say ma'am it's very smart approach take the first lymph node out and see if it is involved if it is involved remove everything the rest all may be involved ahead or not but if the first is not involved how others will be involved my point is that this is the breast let me draw a breast no no and let me draw a tumor for you a rough diagram a sketch diagram so here is the tumor let me draw the lymphatics for that so this is the lymphatics these are the axillary lymph nodes one by one now in reality they are not present linearly they are present as a cluster but actually they are linear only and they are present as a cluster now i don't know which one is the first now if first is involved rest all may be involved but if first is not involved it is sure sure that others are not involved so sentinel lymph node biopsy is done at the time of the surgery only so i am a surgeon i am operating this lady i will take the main tumor out okay now i will inject a dye I will inject a dye in the lymphatics. I will inject a dye. So dye will highlight the first lymph node. One by one it will go in the lymph node. So from this cluster of lymph node I will come to know this is the first lymph node because dye comes in this lymph node first. So I will take out that lymph node. Only one lymph node I will take out. I will not take out the cluster. The level 1, level 2, level 3, 3 levels are there. I will not take out all 3 levels. I will take out only first lymph node, the sentinel lymph node. And I will send it to the pathologist who is doing the frozen section. You may be knowing the relevance of the frozen section nowadays. Huh? Frozen section is reporting on OT only. In intra only I know during OT only the pathologist will report instantly the report is given within 10 minutes so within 10 minutes the pathologist will tell whether the lymph node is involved or not involved so it is a call taken by the surgeon at that point if the lymph node is involved the complete lymphatics has to be removed if that sentinel is not involved we will close the patient and we will not remove the axillary. So this is the relevance of the sentinel lymph node I am telling you. Especially in the breast cancer, vulva cancer and melanoma. It's very important. The sentinel lymph node biopsy. You can see in this diagram also I am showing this is the main tumor and this is the sentinel lymph node. The first lymph node coming on the way. Say yes if you all got it. Can we go ahead? Huh? Now this is the thing. Now sometimes what happens now? This is the main tumor you can see here. This is the main tumor of um, oral cavity say. Huh? Now this is the usual... Um, root by which it spread via lymphatics this is the usual root so this is the first lymph node then second then third the usual root but usual root is blocked due to something there is blockage so it is going to alternate root it is going to some alternate root so skip metastasis can be there this is known as skip metastasis sometimes it can be there and one more important point so one by one all the lymph nodes are involved i got that i got that this is the lymphatic so one by one all the lymph nodes will be involved the first lymph node is the sentinel lymph node this is the tumor these are the tumor cells coming here one by one they will involve this they will involve this they will involve this and this lymph node is known as sentinel lymph node i got all these points very clearly my point is that my next question is that in a lymph node when it is involved so what is the first first thing inside that which is involved so what is the diagram of a lymph node in the lymph node we have a capsule in the lymph node just below the lymph node we have a capsule and we have a trabeculae coming out of the capsule you may be knowing that and we have uh, follicles the, the lymphoid follicles are there I know these all are the follicles I know we have cortex we have medulla these are the follicles I know just below the uh, capsule we have subcapsular sinus 
sinus means blood vessels capillaries a cluster of capillaries dilated capillaries are present that is subcapsular sinus so whenever the lymph node is involved now the first portion involved is subcapsular sinus it's also a very important pyq this portion is involved first tumor cells go and grow in this portion subcapsular sinus mein sabse pehle aayenge here can you see this diagram please appreciate this diagram and appreciate the subcapsular sinus here appreciate the tumor cells here these all are tumor cells involving here hai na so these are the tumor cells you can see here at the subcapsular sinus hai na subcapsular sinus pe pyq hai please learn the word subcapsular sinus now let me tell you the mystery of the virtual lymph node what do you mean by virtual lymph node <laughs> virtual lymph node is left left sup supra clavicular lymph node can you see this is the clavicle bone we can feel feel your clavicle bone just above the clavicle bone we have lymph nodes here sometime can you see here the patient is coming the first complaint of the patient doctor i am having a mass over here so i palpate it's not a mass it's a lymph node which get enlarged hai na now it can be lymphoma the primary malignancy of this lymph node or it can be some secondary of some other malignancy in the body hai na there can be some other malignancy in the body in which metastasis occurs in this lymph node hai na this is left supraclavicular lymph node now usually in git git malignancies like the stomach colon gall bladder where they all drain all the git will drain in the thoracic duct hai na git ka lymphatic kon hai the complete git will drain in the thoracic duct and thoracic duct will open in the blood stream at the left supraclavicular lymph node level so that's why any tumor in the git sometimes what happens the left supraclavicular lymph node is the first lymph node which get enlarged so whenever any patient coming to you being a doctor you should know this left lymph node enlargement the only complaint no other complaint look for git look for git tumor he may have he or she may have some hidden git tumor that is the relevance of the virtual lymph node right it represents some hidden or sometime patient have both the complaint along with this mass patient have complaint of the stomach and the colon or gallbladder cancers also right so virtual lymph node you got my point so that is the reason so we are done with the lymphatic route all the important points of the lymphatic route we have seen and now we will see the hematogenous route can i start the hematogenous route are you people with me just a second let me open the chat can we move ahead ha huh? so kindly respond can we start the hematogenous route so we are done with the lymphatic route in the lymphatic route we have seen all the important points important points are the first thing lymphatic route spread is seen in carcinomas not in sarcomas and sarcomas hematogenous route is more common here the first lymph node is known as sentinel lymph node and here the regional lymph nodes we have to remove we have to take a call based on the sentinel lymph node the sentinel lymph node is important in breast cancer vulva cancer and melanoma right and sometimes skip metastasis is also there we have to take care virtual lymph node we should know what do you mean by virtual lymph node whenever any one particular lymph node is involved it is the subcapsular sinus area that is involved now we will see the details of the hematogenous route the second and after that we have to see the third route that is transcelomic route so let's come on the second route the second route is the hematogenous route hematogenous route is common for sarcoma hematogenous route is for sarcoma what do you mean by hematogenous the blood vessel let me draw a uh, tumor for you uh, for example this is a tumor okay let's say this is a tumor okay now from this tumor this is a sarcoma so it will spread via blood vessel so blood vessels are of two types na this is artery and this is vein this is vein so blood blood some tumor cells will dissociate and they will spread via artery or vein i'm asking you a question they will spread via artery they prefer artery or they prefer vein to spread to multiple organs which organ which uh, blood vessel they prefer artery or vein and why you should know the reason also why i'm asking you whether they prefer artery or whether they prefer vein i'm asking you Ah, huh? they prefer vein. So usually hematogenous route is through vein. Is through vein because for penetrating inside that they have to penetrate the wall. Now arteries have very thick wall. You may be knowing the wall of the artery. The wall of the artery is very muscular. The tunica media is very thick. So it's difficult for the tumor cell to penetrate inside the artery. They cannot do so. Huh? Uh, always. So it's very usual they get penetrating the vein wall and they spread via the vein. Right. So the first point is that. hematogenous route is common in sarcoma and veins are more commonly involved as compared to arteries because they have thinner wall see the diagram also i want you to appreciate the thickness of the artery and the appreciate of the thickness of the vein wall ha na veins are more commonly involved now because the veins are more commonly involved via hematogenous route name the first most common and second most common organ involved secondary secondary sabse pehle kis mein banegi most common secondaries are seen in liver you know the reason why most common secondaries are seen in reason uh, liver and second most common uh, secondaries are seen in the lung so liver followed by lung you know the reason 
let me tell you the reason most common secondaries are seen in liver followed by lung in case of sarcoma whenever there is a primary sarcoma anywhere in the body most common secondary occurs in liver second most common secondary occur in the lung hai na these are the two most common organ involved now let me explain you why let me explain you why um you know whenever uh, there is any git where is the git is draining the complete git so this is the complete git from esophagus till, till intestine this is the complete git where does complete git veins go so these are the veins of the git you may be knowing all the veins of the git they open in portal vein and from portal vein you may be knowing the, the portal vein first go in the liver and from the liver it is the hepatic vein which goes in the heart for purification of the blood the deoxygenated blood this is hepatic vein so this is the complete anatomy you may be knowing now imagine if someone is having any sarcoma either in the esophagus or in the stomach or in the anywhere in the git so these are the tumor cells these are sarcoma cells they will spread via the blood vessels they will spread via the vein so they will go in their corresponding vein corresponding vein corresponding vein some of the tumor cells will go so these tumor cells will go in the portal vein and via portal vein they reach the liver the first organ which is coming on the way is the liver and they form multiple secondaries in the liver so liver is the most common organ involved here due to the portal circulation this is known as portal circulation so any git sarcoma results in metastasis in the liver metastasis are the secondaries the, the main tumor is the primary and these all are the secondaries which are formed in the liver so why liver is most common involved organ this is the reason the reason is the portal drainage in one word if i say it's portal drainage now what about the lung why lung so you will say ma'am ye to hua git ka what about other organs in body all other organs not git except git we have many other organs we have kidney we have brain we have multiple organs in the body come on spleen yay wo we have multiple organs hai na so all does all these organs where does they they drain so they are they also have the veins but their veins do not go in the portal vein all the veins go either in superior vena cava or inferior vena cava of of the body hai na all the veins of the body they drain in superior inferior vena cava and superior and inferior vena cava drain in right side of the heart they drain in the right this is right side this is left side we know the impure blood the deoxygenated blood it goes in the right side of the heart so first in right auricle then in right ventricle and finally it will drain in the lungs finally it will drain in the lungs and from the lungs the pure blood will go via pulmonary vein to the left side of the heart now now imagine all these organs any of the organ except git any of the organ having sarcoma any of the organ in human body we have hundreds of organ any organ organ have sarcoma so the tumor cells will come in the corresponding vein hai na via hematogenous route all the vein will go svc ivc so tumor cells will come in svc or ivc tumor cells will go in right auricle left auricle and the first organ which is coming in the way is the lung that's why multiple secondaries are formed in the lung so lung is the second most common organ involved because of the caval blood flow superior inferior vena cava this is known as caval circulation you got my point you may you uh, one of the student last time asked me ma'am heart is also an organ which is coming on the way now why not multiple secondaries formed in the heart heart is the first organ which is coming on the way after that lung is coming na so heart may secondaries will not uh, form because here is high flowing blood is there blood is not static there high flowing blood is there so tumor cells do not have stasis there they just flow out and in the lung the circulation is slow so they have a time of seedling and then they form multiple secondaries there so my point is that if any tumor occurs in entire git the secondaries are formed in the liver and if any tumor occurs sarcoma occurs in anywhere of the body except git the secondaries are formed in the lung we know the reason the reason for the liver is portal circulation and reason for the lung is caval circulation give me a thumbs up how many of you got it so that's why we say this is portal circulation you see the complete git you see the complete git the complete git is stomach spleen pancreas intestine small All large, they all drain in the liver, है ना? And this is caval circulation. You all can see. You all can see all the organs. They drain in superior inferior vena cava via right side of the heart. They go in the lung. So in the lung, this is the caval circulation. So most common organ involved is liver. Second most common organ involved is lung. That is hematogenous root. Hematogenous root. So what we have learned, we have learned two roots till now. Lymphatic root. And hematogenous root. What we have learned in them, uh, lymphatic root is. Um, more common in carcinomas and hematogenous root is more common in sarcomas right in lymphatic root all the regional lymph nodes get involved regional lymph nodes one by one 
one by one they involved the first lymph node is known as sentinel lymph node and we know the relevance of that also we know the relevance of the virtual lymph node also never forget it is indicating some hidden git malignancy theek hai in the sarcomas we have seen the most common organ involved is liver the reason is portal circulation second most common organ for the secondary is the lung the reason is the caval circulation these all are your pyqs and questions can we go ahead huh? the third route is the transcelomic route please understand what is transcelomic route so it's not lymphatic it's not blood something else is there so there are three things in the transcelomic route we are having three things in the transcelomic route and on let me tell you the first is the direct seedling in the body cavity uh, okay imagine imagine this is the female body let me draw a rough diagram of a female body okay a rough sketch diagram this is the thoracic cavity this is abdominal cavity <clears throat> this is pelvic cavity so complete peritoneal cavities are there imagine she is having again gastric cancer and now she is having the gastric cancer theek hai so let me draw a stomach tumor this is the primary main tumor so sometime what happens the tumor cells are not going in the blood not going in the lymphatic they just shed down in the cavity they are just shedding shedding out in the cavity and this is float in the cavity from the cavity where they are going see they are going to both the ovaries in the pelvis there is ovaries no so they are going to both the ovaries and forming two secondaries in the two ovaries i mean multiple secondaries in the ovaries so both the ovaries get involved so basically the patient is having a triad the three tumors in the body one primary two secondary and now this is known as typical presentation of krukenberg this is known as krukenberg tumor krukenberg may primary is in stomach and secondary is in is in ovary and and the root is transcelomic root it is not via blood it is not via lymphatic it is direct seedling direct seedling in the cavity this is the best example krukenberg pe you get frequent question on krukenberg the primary tumor is in the stomach and the secondary tumors are in the ovaries ha na so very poor prognosis secondary tumor if the primary tumor usually in the stomach it is signet ring cell carcinoma that shows the krukenberg appearance in the ovaries also you get the uh, signet ring cells there and the prognosis is poor that is transcelomic spread the first example i give you so natural open field that is via peritoneal cavity here you can see this is the primary tumor in the stomach and it is coming it is coming through the cavity and involving the ovary not only one both the ovaries get involved this is typical presentation of krukenberg see this is the uterus of the lady this is the uterus of the lady and see both the ovaries are bulky because both the ovaries so whenever you have on the sonography both the ovaries get involved look for the primary in the stomach maybe the lady is presenting with krukenberg tumor got my point the second in transcelomic route the first is via cavity hai yeah, na uh, that is body cavities um, pelvic cavity abdominal cavity peritoneal cavity the second is via csf you know uh, csf is present um, in the subarachnoid space around the brain also around the spinal cord also imagine there is a primary tumor here in some portion of the brain so some of the tumor cells are are detaching and going in the csf and via csf they are going ahead and forming a secondary which is discontinuous with the primary so can i call it metastasis of course it is a metastatic ha na metastasis means it is discontinuous so the same tumor formed a little bit ahead in the central nervous system only but it is discontinuous it is not continuity and who's doing the spread the spread is via cns uh, csf cerebrospinal fluid so again it is an example of transcelomic ha na transcelomic route and third is implantation implantation means imagine a surgeon a surgeon is operating a patient who is having some cancer so a surgeon is using the scalpel scalpel the surgeon is cutting the tumor so tumor cells are present on the knife on the blade of the scalpel i must say okay now without sterilizing or without changing the blade the surgeon is cutting some other portion in the same patient so tumor cells are transferred from one portion to another via the surgeon scalpel very rare very rare it is known as implantation surgeon scalpel can be there so it is the third third route so in transcelomic we have three types number one via cavities of the body the best example here i told you krukenberg never forget ha huh? the second i told you through csf it can happen and third i told you through surgeon's scalpel it can happen very rare of the rarest but yeah it can it can be a medium to transfer the tumor cells from one organ to another so uh, if the surgeon's scalpel is transferring from one organ to another so another organ will have the same tumor which is discontinuous from the first so technically saying it's also metastasis say yes if you all got it so you all got it what are the roots of the metastasis ha huh? what are the roots of the metastasis you got it or you didn't got it can we go ahead you get many questions on that you get many questions on that now let me tell you the mechanism of the metastasis let me tell you the 
mechanism of the metastasis there are eight steps in the mechanism of the metastasis one by one we will see all the steps okay so can you see all the eight steps are in this diagram how does the um, uh, metastasis actually takes place so let's take we have three roots now lymphatic hematogenous and transulomic let's take hematic hematogenous the most common via blood so how does metastasis occurs via blood step by step we have to see in detail step by step you get many pyqs on mechanism in detail very few students understand this so let me explain you the diagram first everyone here on the screen listen what i'm showing you please see this is the tumor you can see these are the tumor cells these are the tumor having tumor cells inside that now the first step some of the tumor cells become aggressive they become hyper aggressive inside that hai na? they have um, some mutations inside that and they become aggressive they have a tendency to spread so a clone will form inside the tumor which is having angiogenesis tendency inside that a aggressive clone aggressive clone is formed that is step number one right now this clone imagine two three cells are there they will separate from the other from the other tumor cells they have to loosen that is step number two we, they have to lose from other tumor cells so how does loosening occur so who is adhering the tumor cells with each other who is adhering who is the gum gum yani kaun chipka ke rakhta hai who is adhering or sticking the tumor cells with each other so there is a gene there is a protein i mean it is known as e cadherin e cadherin e cadherin what does e cadherin do e cadherin stick the multiple tumor cells with each other what does e cadherin do it stick the multiple tumor cells with each other now now there is loss of e cadherin will occur tumor cells are very smart they will lose the e cadherin a cluster of tumor cell will lose the e cadherin so they will lose from rest of the tumor cells number two number one a cluster become aggressive number two that cluster become loosened by loss of e cadherin right number three now you can see a blood vessel this is the tumor you all can see this is the blood vessel let me highlight the blood vessel and the endothelial lining of the blood vessel see the blood vessel is lined by the endothelium you all can see and between the tumor and the endothelium you can see there is extracellular matrix it is known as ecm the yellow color this is extracellular matrix so tumor cells have to come out of the tumor have to infiltrate the extracellular matrix and then enter the blood vessel it is not they are coming directly in the blood vessel and jumping in the blood vessel no it is not there so first the tumor cell come out they go in the extracellular matrix ecm and gradually they move inside the blood vessel they will flow to some other organ and form multiple secondaries and multiple organ this is the complete system got my point the complete mechanism so the third the what is the first step i told you the first step i told you some of the tumor cells separate and they become aggressive from the main clone and uh, they separate later first they become aggressive so some of the say two three cells they form a clone they become hyper aggressive they have mutations inside them now they will separate from the main tumor they will loosen loosen by loss of e cadherin now the third they will interact with the ecm interaction and then penetration first they interact and they degrade the ecm and penetrate inside that so for interaction they have receptors what is the ecm made up of the ecm is made up of collagen laminin so they have receptors for collagen receptors for laminin they interact hai na? and after that they have enzymes they secrete the enzyme collagenase laminase hai na? so all these enzymes they will secrete and they will degrade the ecm and penetrate inside that that is the fourth step hai na? interaction followed by penetration after that after penetrating now they have to go inside the blood vessel so they enter inside the blood vessel in the lumen of the blood vessel and now they enter inside the lumen of the blood vessel and form a thrombus there form a thrombus now they are foreign for the blood vessel now when anything foreign comes in blood why don't wbc kill them you should ask this question ma'am they are the foreign particle for the blood vessel in the blood vessel we have army the army is the wbc why don't wbc kill the foreign cell why don't because they are very smart the tumor cells are very smart they are forming a small cluster a group a thrombus and cover themselves with rbc and platelet they cover themselves from all the sides with rbc and platelets so that wbc do not identify them wbc think that it's rbc only it's rbc and platelet only they are covered this is known as thrombus formation so first they enter inside the blood vessel number one and after entry entry is not sufficient immediately after entry they are forming a thrombus so that they can escape the defense mechanism by the wbc and uh, they can escape that uh, got my point now now they flow to some other organ now blood is flowing everywhere they are flowing everywhere so they flow everywhere and they wherever they will find the suitable environment suitable nutrition suitable everything they just extra vasate extra vasation extra vasation means coming out at some other point other tissue and there they will grow they will form a metastasis there so these are the eight steps got my point do you have any confusion can i tell you the detail of all eight one by one let me tell you the first step the first step is the clonal proliferation and angiogenesis the clone become hyper aggressive so inside the tumor few cells show heterogeneity a monoclonal population of the cell it will show heterogeneity it will develop the tendency to show the metastasis number one you can see a clone and one clone is there 
After that, they will lose from rest of the others. That clone will lose from rest of the others by loss of e cadrin. Loss of e cadrin is a PYQ. Please learn. Loss of e cadrin. E cadrin is the gum. It's the sticky material which stick the cell with each other. If the e cadrin is lost, the tumor cells separate from each other. They separate from each other. After separating, they do interaction with the ECM. They are just interacting with the ECM and after interacting, they will penetrate. For interaction, they have receptors. Receptor for collagen, fibronectin, laminin, uh, uh, vitronectin. Anna? So all these are the composition of the ECM. So they interact with all. They have receptors. They have receptors. Now they will degrade. Yes, yes, Ayush, absolutely right. They will degrade with the help of metalloproteinase. They will degrade with the help of collagenase, gelatinase. Anna, metalloproteinase and they will degrade, degrade, degrade and enter inside. After entering, the fifth point is the entry of the tumor cell inside the blood vessel. How does tumor cell enter inside the blood vessel? They have, they have a cytokine in them. The tumor cell secrete a cytokine. The name of the cytokine is autocrine motility factor, AMF, because of which they just penetrate inside the blood vessel and go inside. After going inside, they form a thrombus. They cover themselves with WBC and platelet. I'm sorry, with RBC and platelet. So that WBC do not identify them. So this is the thing. They can get the protection from the immune system. So that's why they are forming the thrombus. Finally, they are extra sitting at some other point, at some other uh, location, and they are growing there. With the help of the growth factors, they are growing there. So this is the metastasis. This is the metastasis. All the eight steps are in front of you. Can we solve some MCQs? Are you people there? Can we solve some MCQs? Huh? So are you people ready for the MCQs? I'm sorry, can I see your chat? Just a second. Give me a minute. Okay, so let's solve some MCQs based on that. Okay, so the first question is in front of you. The most reliable feature of malignant tumor. There are many questions and you all have to participate. The most reliable feature of the malignant tumor. What is the most reliable feature of a malignant tumor? Is it local invasion? Is it metastasis? Is it rapid growth or poor differentiation? What is the correct answer? Most reliable, I am asking. I told you most reliable as well as second uh, most reliable. Most reliable feature to differentiate benign and malignant. So, of course, the answer is metastasis. Yes, you are absolutely right. The correct answer is metastasis. So, metastasis is the feature which differentiate the malignant tumor from the benign tumor. If I change the question, second most reliable. What is the answer now? Yes, currently the answer is B. But if I change most reliable to second most reliable, would you like to change your answer? Be fast and everyone please answer. If you are attending the uh, session from the beginning, you may be knowing the answer. Yes, the correct answer is A. In that case, the local invasion is the second most reliable. Very good. Squamous cell carcinoma spread most commonly via implantation, hematogenous root, lymphatic root or transcellomic root. I am asking for squamous cell carcinoma. Yes, what is the correct answer? Use your common sense and give me the answer. Now, don't get confused. Uh, the examiner is... Uh, confusing you by giving some name of the tumor so just see the suffix you are not interested whether it is squamous cell carcinoma adenocarcinoma whatever it is it's a carcinoma na? so carcinoma spread via what you know that carcinoma spread via what and I don't see whether it is squamous whether it is adeno whether it is transitional cell whether it is whatever carcinoma if it is a carcinoma it will spread via lymphatic so I told you all carcinomas spread via lymphatic and all sarcomas spread via hematogenous root and please learn the rule the golden rule so correct answer here is C, you all are right. If squamous cell carcinoma ko mein kar dun, sarcoma, any sarcoma, any sarcoma, I will give you some name of the sarcoma. In that case, your answer will become B. And any sarcoma, Ewing sarcoma, there are many sarcomas in the body, na? So any sarcoma, if I give you Ewing sarcoma spread by, so examiner will give you some name to divert you. You will think about that entity. Don't think about that. They are asking about the spread, now. Learn the general rule, learn the basics. Okay, the next question is in front of you. All of the following are involved in tumor metastasis except which of the following is not involved in tumor metastasis. Read. Now, you know the eight steps, na? Is fibronectin is involved or not involved? e cadrin is involved or not involved? Type 4 collagenase and tyrosine kinase. What is not coming in one of any of the eight steps? You know the eight steps of metastasis. What is the correct answer? I guess fibronectin is coming. Fibronectin is coming in receptors. So it is for the receptors uh, the tumor cells is having for interacting with fibronectin, collagen, laminin. e cadrin, there is loss of e cadrin. And collagen, collagenase, we have enzyme collagenase that degrade the collagen and doing the penetration in ECM. But tyrosine kinase is not at all involved. You all are right. The correct answer here is D. Very good. Right. So you can see which of the following is most common site of metastasis. Is it lung, bone, liver or brain? I told you the reason also. Which is the most common site in human body for metastasis? Yes. What is the correct answer? Most common site of metastasis with reason. Most common site is liver. You all are right. Anna, what is the reason? 
the reason is the portal circulation portal circulation the correct answer here is liver the reason is portal circulation what if i change the question most common site to second most common site of the metastasis what is the second most common site i told you tell me the answer yes the second most common site of metastasis is what the second most common site is the lung and the reason is carval circulation the next question is in front of you carcinoma with no or minimal metastasis tell me a carcinoma an exception you will say ma'am carcinoma means malignancy yes carcinoma sarcoma means malignancy hai na? so all the malignant tumors shows metastasis except two i told you the two exceptions the two malignant tumors which are malignant but they don't show any metastasis what is the correct answer here yes the, the two exception let me read the option is it squamous cell carcinoma basal cell carcinoma melanoma or lytic cell carcinoma so yes you all are right the correct answer is basal cell carcinoma so basal cell carcinoma do not show metastasis the two exceptions are glioma of the brain and basal cell carcinoma of the skin these two are malignant tumor but they show minimal or no metastasis still they show minimal metastasis it's a very common pyq all these pyqs are repeatedly asked in various exam in different language but the concept remains same so please understand the basics the concepts behind neoplasia okay what is the sure sign of malignancy surest sign of malignancy if that is present matlab the tumor has to be malignant there is no other option is it mitosis is it polychromatia is it nuclear pleomorphism or is it metastasis i mean to ask what is the most reliable feature that differentiate the benign from malignant the surest sign the most reliable sign of malignancy yes sure short answer again i'm asking the same question in a different language hai na? correct answer still is d hai na? so whether the question is on the surest sign of malignancy whether is the question on the most reliable sign of malignancy whether the question is on reliable sign to differentiate benign and malignancy answer always same it's metastasis metastasis followed by local invasion okay the second most common is the lo local invasion i told you next question is in front of you please read the question and tell me the answer all of the following malignant tumors metastasize except so all the malignant tumors metastasize except two huh so which two are the exception is it synovial sarcoma malignant mesothelioma glioma or neuroblastoma so you can see yes so yes the basal cell carcinoma and glioma absolutely right ayush so among the option i can see the glioma so we will go with glioma so one more question i have given on this concept there the answer was basal cell carcinoma here the answer is glioma right so can we go ahead before going to the next topic let me tell you something study hard until the day you can say you can come out of the OT, you can come out of the ICU and say, trust me, I'm your doctor. So don't worry, I am there for you. So imagine that feeling. Don't just say, just close your eyes and imagine that feeling that you are saying this to something. Trust me, I'm your doctor. You can trust me. And you can see the smiles on the faces of the people Anna, for the, the dear ones you are treating. Huh? So imagine that day. So being a doctor is not an easy job, but it's worth. It's worth. You are not uh, working for money. You are working for humanity. You are saving lives. So after God, people believe in doctor. So of course, it is in the hands of the God. No one can be equivalent of the God. But people worship the doctors like gods, the second to gods, because you are the lifesaver. You are going to be lifesaver. So you are getting such a privilege. No, getting such a privilege is not an easy thing. You have to work hard for that. So you are dealing, you are going to deal with the lives of the people. I am teaching you like chapters by chapters. Currently, it's a syllabus for you. You will call neoplasia as a chapter, neoplasia as a syllabus. But one day you will see the cases of that, the real cases, the real lives. You know, the lives are there. Someone, the patient, maybe someone's daughter, maybe someone's spouse, maybe someone's parent, multiple relationship, the complete family is involved. Cancer do not occur to patient. Come on, cancer occur to family. The complete family have a cancer. If any one of the member have a cancer. It's a deadly disease. I'm telling you, if it is metastatic, malignant, no, it's a deadly disease, right? So work hard till that day that you can give smile. Even if you increase the quality of life, even of one individual for even one day with your services, with your knowledge, now your life is worth. So of course, the purpose of all the doctors of all of us is same to increase the quality of life and quantity also, of course, if we can, the quality and quantity of the life in the people's life. More and more quality, more and more quantity by curing the diseases, by diagnosing properly, by treating properly, by giving good prognosis with our knowledge, with our skills. Okay. So anyways, coming on the next topic, next topic is going to be super difficult. Okay. Can we start? So genetic regulators, why does cancer occur at genetic level? Can anyone explain me? We have already seen uh, oh, what is neoplasia. We have already seen the two types of the neoplasia, the benign, the malignant. We have already seen how to differentiate them. We have seen the metastasis one, the malignant one are not good. They show the metastasis. We have seen the roots of the metastasis, the mechanism of the metastasis. Now you tell me the genetic regulators. It's a very interesting story. I will tell you. 
listen why does cancer occur for that there are four genes which regulate the cancer occurring so mutation occurs in these genes now that will lead to cancer what are the name of these four genes so the name of these four genes is proto oncogene tumor suppressor gene tumor suppressor gene also known as anti oncogene the third is apoptosis regulatory gene and the fourth one is dna repair gene so don't learn like that it will be very boring if i teach you like that i will tell you a story listen listen everyone here on the screen concentrate here on your gadgets you can see <clears throat> in front of you there is a normal cell i have drawn two cells in front of you both of them are normal both of them are normal cells these are not cancer cell these are normal cell so you can see ma'am what is the difference between the two cell in the first you can see the growth factor is coming whenever the growth factor is coming i will call the growth factor as stimulus it is binding with the growth receptor the growth receptor is the receptor present on the surface of the cell whenever growth factor is coming it is binding with the growth receptor so inside this cell there is a gene which is proto oncogene which gets stimulated it will give signal that growth factor aa gaya hai growth factor have arrived and proto oncogene will do the mitosis proto oncogene is the gene it will form certain proteins that will conduct the cell division mitosis so one growth factor one mitosis one growth factor will cause one mitosis now if you want more mitosis bring more growth factor so the cell division is under control and the name the gene which is causing the cell division the name of the gene is proto oncogene see the second cell the second cell here no growth factor is there growth factor is absent either you say growth factor is absent or else you say growth inhibitor is there i know right on growth inhibitor either growth factor is absent or growth inhibitor is there so at that time another gene gets stimulated inside the dna of this cell it is tumor suppressor gene so tumor suppressor gene inhibit the mitosis so in my all body cells from head to toe we have no please understand proto oncogene is not one gene it's a umbrella term it is having multiple genes inside that i will give you the list i will give you the classification but all these genes have one purpose they do the mitosis they increase the mitosis they do the mitosis and again the same tumor suppressor gene is not one gene students have this misconception ma'am tumor suppressor gene to ek hi gene hota it is multiple genes i will give you the list i will give you the classification of both hai na but the purpose the function of all these genes is to inhibit mitosis is to inhibit mitosis can you understand that so there are two genes i say proto oncogene which increases mitosis tumor suppressor gene which decreases mitosis now imagine you are driving a car do you drive car ha huh? or any vehicle you are driving so you want to increase the speed what do you do you say ma'am i will apply accelerator i will increase the speed ha huh? and if you want to decrease the speed or stop the vehicle what you will do you will apply the brake of course and you will stop the vehicle you can do that you can stop the car so can i say in human body in human cell the proto oncogenes the proto oncogenes are like uh, accelerator because they are increasing the speed of cell division they are increasing mitosis and can i say the tumor suppressor uh, genes they are like brakes they are like brakes because they are stopping the mitosis or decreasing the speed of the mitosis can i say it? so we understand like that accelerator and brake to increase the speed accelerator to decrease the speed there is brake hai na to increase the mitosis we have accelerator in our body that is proto oncogene to decrease the mitosis we have brake in our body that is tumor suppressor gene so whenever i want to increase i can do whenever i want to decrease i can do i don't have any accident the speed is balanced and i can drive it very smoothly in the same way inside the human body inside the cell in our human body wherever cell division is required proto oncogene stimulate karke cell division kar lenge whenever cell division is not required we will stop the cell division via via the brake that is tumor suppressor gene so body goes on uh, smoothly now imagine unfortunately you are driving a car and brake failed in that car the brake is failed huh. one thing and the accelerator got stuck at the highest speed you cannot reduce the accelerator imagine the most unfortunate you know the accelerator is stuck at the highest speed you cannot reduce the speed mm. and you cannot apply the brake also huh. what will happen the speed will be drastic drastic its speed will be there hai na and you will accident bomb so same occurs like that is the cancer that same occurs in human body now imagine due to mutation not this cell now we are surrounding in an environment we are living in an environment in which constantly we are exposed to physical chemical and biological carcinogens physical carcinogens are the rays around us we cannot avoid that uv rays are your rays there are rays hai na chemical we are eating we are inhaling we are drinking many chemicals day to day life and biological there are many viruses parasites bacteria around us in the environment that can cause the mutation so there are three type of mutation physical chemical biological any of the carcinogen is coming here also here also and it is causing mutation in that gene the proto oncogene that is accelerator that got mute now mutations are of two types in your childhood you may have read the type of the mutation gain of function mutation loss of function mutation mutation occur in a gene in one gene hai na in that particular gene after the mutation its normal function become increase as compared to normal or its function become decrease as compared to normal two type of mutations are there now imagine in proto oncogene mutation ki wajah se there is gain gain of function mutation so its function become increase drastically 
है ना एंड इन ड्यू टू म्यूटेशन ट्यूमर सप्रेसर जीन देर इज लॉस ऑफ फंक्शन म्यूटेशन लॉस ऑफ फंक्शन म्यूटेशन सो इट्स फंक्शन डिक्रीज इज ड्रेस्टिकली एंड दे आर इन एक्टिव टेक्निकली दे आर इन एक्टिव तो इमेजिन द एक्सीडेटर गॉट स्टक एट द हाइस्ट स्पीड दे आर ओवर फंक्शनल इतने ओवर कि विदाउट स्टिमुलस ऑल्सो दे कीप ऑन डिवाइडिंग इतने ओवर स्टिमुलेटेड दे बिकम सो ओवर स्टिमुलेटेड देर इज गेन ऑफ फंक्शन इन प्रोटो ऑन्कोजीन दैट विदाउट इवन स्टिमुलस देर इज नो ग्रोथ फैक्टर है कि नहीं डजन मैटर दे कीप ऑन डूइंग माइटोसिस 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 इट लीड्स टू अनकंट्रोल माइटोसिस और एल्स द वन हु आर द ब्रेक्स द वन हु इनहिबिट द माइटोसिस दे बिकम अंडर एक्टिवेटेड और इनएक्टिवेटेड बिकॉज दे आर हैविंग लॉस ऑफ फंक्शन म्यूटेशन सो इमेजिन द डे इमेजिन द डे इफ एनी ऑफ द टू थिंग्स हैपन्स इन ह्यूमन बॉडी और टू थिंग्स अकर टुगेदर एनी ऑफ द टू कैन ऑल्सो हैपन एंड टू ऑल्सो कैन अकर टुगेदर सो दिस इज ओवर स्टिमुलेशन ऑफ प्रोटो ऑन्कोजीन यू कैन सी एंड दिस इज इनिबिशन ऑफ ट्यूमर सब प्रोसोजीन ओवर स्टिमुलेशन ऑफ प्रोटो ऑन्कोजीन इज एक्सिलेटर गॉड स्टक इन द हाइएस्ट स्पीड दैट इज अनकंट्रोल स्पीड है ना एंड द ब्रेक्स आर फेल्ड the breaks are failed or they are under active hai na that is inhibition of tumor suppressor gene it will lead to uncontrolled mitosis uncontrolled mitosis leads to cancer say yes everyone say yes how many of you got it how many of you got it can you got it say yes or no can we go ahead hmm now listen what you will do now the story doesn't end so i i explained you only two genes i have to explain two more i have to explain two more there are total four genes now the two genes you already got it the accelerators and the breaks always call accelerator as proto oncogene always call brake as tumor suppressor gene what my point now what you will do to such a car i am having a car in which the brake is fail and i am having a car in which the accelerator is stuck to the highest uh, speed i cannot reduce the accelerator i want to drive that car no i do not want because i know if i drive i will have accident so i will not drive i will take that car to the mechanic mechanics are available take it to the mechanic ask the mechanic to repair repair brake also repair accelerator also i know so who are the mechanics in human body the third gene the mechanics ha huh? who are the mechanics the mechanics in human body are dna repair gene nami a repair hai na inka nami a repair these are actual mechanics dna repair gene they do the repair but imagine the unfortunate the mechanics are dead or all the mechanic shops are closed they are non functional hai na they all are dead they all are non functional they are also mutated so in them also there is loss of function mutation and they are inactive so mechanics are non functional what should i do i am stuck in a condition imagine i am having a car with me in which brakes are non functional and accelerator are over functional and the mechanics are non not there to repair my car so what should i do now the fourth and the last option i am having i should destroy my car i should destroy my car i should throw it in the junk and i should not drive it i should not drive it otherwise i will have accident my life is more precious as compared to car of course ana so i should throw it i should destroy it i mean ana destroy it and throw it in the junk so here I, i should do that but imagine if i am not allowed to do so due to any reason i am not allowed to do so who are the uh, junk or you can say the throw throw in the human body it's apoptosis who is going to destroy the such um, cells which are not required in human body so apoptotic regulatory gene the fourth one apoptotic regulatory genes are there we are having in our body apoptotic regulatory genes the last and the fourth option we will ask these gene to do the apoptosis of such a cell in which there is proto oncogene is over functional and tumor suppressor gene is non functional and dna repair gene is also non functional so we will ask the apoptotic regulatory gene please destroy it but imagine if it is that is also mutated loss of function mutation and that is also not functional so unfortunately i have to drive that car i have to drive that car and accident is going to happen this is cancer mystery this is the mystery of the cancer got it so in the mystery of the cancer we are having four genes with us what are the four genes so call proto oncogenes as accelerators they have gain of function mutation call tumor suppressor genes as breaks and call them they have loss of function mutation call dna repair genes as mechanics these are the mechanics okay they also have loss of function mutation and call apoptotic regulatory genes we have to these are the destroyers they destroy the car destroyers but they are also non functional so loss of function mutation so we have one gain of function mutation and three loss of function mutation gain of function occurs in proto oncogene and loss of function occurs in tumor suppressor gene apoptotic regulatory gene and dna repair gene that leads to cancer how many of you got this concept how many of you got this concept so this is the complete story so out of the four the two genes are ultra important in your syllabus although all four in the body they they are mutated like that but in in uh, your syllabus two genes are ultra important the proto oncogene and tumor suppressor genes the accelerators and the brakes ha na so over stimulation of the accelerator and inhibition of the brake that leads to cancer this is cancer give me a thumbs up give me a gesture that you got it write down something give me a thumbs up give me some indication you got it ha huh? 
so this is the thing this is how cancer occurs this is how cancer occurs you can see so this is a normal cell in front of you you all can see this is a normal cell now physical chemical or biological any carcinogen is coming because of which inside which the gene which regulate the apoptosis that is mutated loss of function so here the destroyers are gone after that the dna uh, repair gene they are also gone the mechanics are also gone and the dna repair gene after that the oncogene and tumor suppressor gene they get mutated so there is no one to repair them there is no one to destroy them and ultimately there is um, uncontrolled cell division and that leads to cancer got it so this is the thing now we will see the two genes one by one we will see these two genes one by one can i start can i start first we will see the activation of proto oncogene and then we will see the inhibition of tumor suppressor gene let's start proto oncogene what are proto oncogene these are the normal gene present in you me everyone they are the normal gene which cause mitosis whenever stimulus is there these are normal genes these are accelerators accelerators are not currently stuck at the highest speed they are normal in all our body the person who have cancers in them these are stuck at the highest speed but they are normal genes otherwise they are normal okay these are discovered by harold wemmers and michael bishop it's also a pyq these are the normal genes they work under physiological stimulus whenever the stimulus come they will they will show the mitosis they will do the mitosis otherwise they, they will not do my point is that proto oncogenes are normal genes when they got mutated and they become uh, gain of function mutation they become over activated they become oncogene so oncogene are the over activated version of proto oncogene oncogene are the over activated version of onco and these are present in cancer patient so i mean to say proto oncogene are present normally in all healthy individuals but oncogenes are present only in cancer patient when proto oncogene become abnormal become mutated they have gain of function mutation and they have hyperactivity they are known as oncogenes you got my point so proto oncogenes and oncogenes it's like it's like this so proto oncogene are present in normal cell and oncogene are present in cancer cell oncogene are the over activation of proto oncogene how many of you got it can we go ahead this is the thing how many type of mutations are there there are three type of gain of function mutation either point mutation translocation or amplification i will give you example of all of them so this is how proto oncogene get converted to oncogene by one of the three mutation let me classify proto oncogene how many types of proto oncogene you have in your syllabus so all this is the classification of the proto oncogene these all are normal genes that cause mitosis any of them can have mutation and leads to different cancers in human body from head to toe we have different cancers so this is the mystery behind the proto oncogene let me tell you the classification there are five type of proto oncogene broadly we divide them in five different categories you have to learn this classification among this classification i will give you details of two or three the important one i will not explain all but two three important ultra important i will explain in detail so this is the proto oncogene for understanding the classification you have to tell me how does a cell divide this is a cell this is a nucleus of the cell how does cell division takes place you tell me the steps you will see ma'am the first thing required is a growth receptor number one and the second thing which is required is a growth factor growth factor the so growth factor will come bind with the growth receptor this is the first and the second thing growth receptor growth factor now whenever the growth factor that is stimulus is coming binding with the growth receptor this signal has to be given to the nucleus ki growth factor have already arrived on the cell membrane because receptor is present on the membrane but we have to give the signal to the nucleus so there can be some messenger who is taking the message from the cell membrane till nucleus hai na there should it should be some messenger hai na koi messenger there should be some postman some messenger who take the signal who take the message from the cell membrane to the nucleus that growth factor have already arrived there hai na these messengers are cytoplasmic transduction protein because they are present in cytoplasm cytoplasmic transduction proteins are there they will take the signal from the cell membrane till the nucleus in the nucleus the dna will receive the signal that growth factor have already arrived hai na now after this in the nucleus certain genes will get activated the proto oncogene certain genes will get activated and they will show the transcription and translation so these are the transcription genes they will do the transcription followed by translation and finally the cell division takes place lastly the cell cycle cell cycle will take place the mitosis m1 m2 you know the cell cycle takes place so these are the steps so at every step the genes are required so first is growth factor you can see these are these are the growth factors they are coming they will bind with the growth receptors the second is the growth receptor you see they are binding the growth factor coming binding with the growth receptor the third are the messenger who take the signal from the cell membrane till the nucleus the cytoplasmic messenger these are known as signal transduction protein the cytoplasmic transduction protein number 4 in the nucleus transcription take place transcription and finally cell division cell cycle so these are the five type of the genes learn genes in each category learn genes in each category the growth factors are pdgf tgf alpha 
प्लीज माइंड टीजीएफ अल्फा जो है ना इट्स अ प्रोटो ऑंकोजीन लेकिन टीजीएफ बीटा इज ट्यूमर सप्रेसर जीन टीजीएफ अल्फा इज अ प्रोटो ऑंकोजीन एफ जी एफ एंड सी मैट दीज आर द ग्रोथ फैक्टर्स ग्रोथ रिसेप्टर्स में टीजीएफ इज इंपॉर्टेंट रेड इज इंपॉर्टेंट साइटोप्लाज्मिक ट्रांसडक्शन बोथ आर अल्ट्रा इंपॉर्टेंट आई एम गोइंग टू टीच यू दीज टू इन डिटेल द रास एंड एबीएल बी सी आर बोथ आर सिग्नल ट्रांसडक्शन वी विल सी द डिटेल्स ऑफ दीज टू इन डिटेल अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट सी मिक एल मिक एंड मिक द थ्री टाइप ऑफ द मिक इज देयर एंड यर साइक्लिन एंड सी डीज आर देयर इट्स बेटर इफ यू लर्न द क्लासिफिकेशन यू गेट मेनी क्वेश्चन ऑन द क्लासिफिकेशन विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज अ प्रोटो ऑकोजीन और विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज नॉट अ प्रोटो ऑकोजीन सो इफ यू कॉन्ट लर्न ऑल दीज एट लीस्ट रीड बिफोर गोइंग टू यर एग्जाम so it will click in your mind if looking at the four option you can identify which is proto oncogene which is not a proto oncogene so we will see the details of the two from this we will see the details of only two which two ras and abl bcr okay let's start with ras ras and abl bcr so let's start with ras hai na let's start with ras ras is the most common proto oncogene which get mutated among all these you can see many proto oncogene among all these the most common which get mutated is ras only okay the ras only among the proto oncogene ha na let me tell you normally let me tell you two scenario normal and in mutation how does ras function normally and how does in mutation it cause cancer mai dono story like a story i will tell you everyone on the screen i am telling you the ras gene very few students have this much of understanding that they can understand how does ras function normally in normal human body and how during mutation it cause the cancer so over activation of this it's a proto oncogene na no? over activation that is gain of function mutation will lead to cancer listen like a story can you see a cell can you see a cell on the surface now i'm telling you normal ha huh? see see a cell imagine in my body this is a cell any cell of the body on the surface of the cell i can see a growth receptor say yes there is a growth receptor on the surface of the cell just below the cell membrane there is a protein ras protein this is normal ras normal ras and currently it's inactive you will say ma'am how do you know it's inactive whenever it is binded with gdp guanine diphosphate it is inactive my point is that ras whenever it is binded with gdp na it's inactive and when gdp converted to gtp guanine triphosphate it become active so this is inactive version and this is active version it's a rule you have to learn so see the diagram very carefully i have drawn this diagram very intentionally and carefully each and everything is taken care of you can see i have drawn two phosphates here Two phosphates, diphosphate, guanine diphosphate, है ना? It is diphosphate, it is inactive. Currently, it is inactive because there is no growth factor, ना? No? There is no growth factor, it is inactive. बैठा हुआ है चुपचाप, ठीक है? Now the growth factor have arrived. See the next, है ना? This is the growth factor. As soon as the growth factor come and it bind with the growth receptor, as soon as growth factor come, it bind with the growth receptor. You can see what is happening. The GDP, the two phosphate converted to GTP, the three three phosphate. Guanine diphosphate converted to guanine triphosphate. You all can see. So inactive ras converted to active ras. Active ras will come in the cytoplasm. From the cell membrane, it is coming to the cytoplasm. In the cytoplasm, we have multiple mechanism. Don't learn the name of the mechanism. It can be PI three K. It can be RAF, MR, MR, MAPK. At your level, I am not expecting you to learn the exact mechanism. But we have many mechanism. It will do one mitosis. So this cell will divide into two daughter cells. this cell will divide into two cells right two cells i mean right one one growth factor one mitosis one growth factor have caused the one mitosis immediately after the mitosis what happens one mitosis is already over hai na now inside this ras there is a intrinsic protein ras ke andar hi ek protein hota hai intrinsic protein that protein is known as gtpase activating protein full form batao what is the full form of gap gtpase activating gtpase activating protein gtpase activating protein it is known as gap gap gtpase activating protein it is present inside the ras only so as soon as mitosis occur na this gap get activated hai na gtpase activating protein hai to gtpase aa jayega and gtpase will degrade the gtp to gdp again gdp se wapas gtp ho jayega gtp se wapas gdp ho jayega so ras again become inactive my point is that again the ras become inactive and again the story is like the beginning only now if you want to do one more mitosis bring another uh, growth factor another growth factor will come the another again mitosis so mitosis is un under control in normal human body in me you every healthy individual um, the ras is under control i mean one growth factor brings out one mitosis the mitosis is under control that's why we don't have cancer right now got my point this is the normal function of the ras give me a thumbs up if you got it this is the normal function of the ras you can see the same diagram from the book diagram i i tried to draw this diagram for you simplicity and you can see the same diagram here you can see this is the cell membrane see this blue is the cell membrane you all can notice this is the cell membrane okay on the surface of the cell membrane you can see these are the growth factors so whenever growth Uh, receptor growth factor is coming and binding with the growth receptor inactive ras converted to active ras active ras is causing mitosis 
on doing mitosis the gap get stimulated again convert gtp to gtp so this is the story so normally the ras is inactive when it is bind to gtp whenever growth factor come gdp come uh, is exchanged with gtp so ras become active when the ras will become active it will do the mitosis after one mitosis gap come in the role gap gap is very important gtp is activating protein it will degrade the gtp again in gtp and now so ras become inactive now this is means the ras activation is transient and it is under control one growth factor will do one mitosis now what happens in mutation how does it causes cancer can you explain how does it causes cancer how does it causes cancer see the same story again you have to tell me where is the difference i will tell you the steps you tell me where is the difference you can see again the same cell is there you can see again the same growth receptor is there you can see ras is inactive currently because it is binded with gdp right the growth factor is coming as soon as the growth factor is coming gdp is replaced by gtp so inactive ras converted to active the active ras is coming in the cytoplasm and doing the mitosis till now the story is same till now the story is same what was there the next step as soon as mitosis occur what was happening there i repeat as soon as mitosis occur what was happening normally there was a intrinsic protein known as gap get stimulated here due to mutation the gap is non functional here mutated ras i am teaching you na in mutated ras the gap is non functional the gap is not at all functioning so since the gap is not at all functioning the gtp is activating protein is not there since gtp is activating protein is not there gtp is not degraded gtp will remain as gtp only and ras is ras is activated forever or ever it is so only one growth factor is coming and activating the ras forever normally one growth factor cause one mitosis here one growth factor causes uncontrolled mitosis the mitosis become uncontrolled one because ras is functional it is going on keeping mitosis 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 and it will lead to cancer say yes if you got it so in mutation whenever there is a mutation in rot mutation means what exactly mutated the gap is mutated gap is non functional since the gap is non functional gtp is activity is not there there is no breakdown of gtp gtp will remain as gtp only gtp will not be converted to gdp ras will not be inactivated so permanent activation of ras one growth factor causing permanent here i use the word transient if you see transient transient activation of ras one growth factor activating the ras for a fraction of second after that again inactive but here it's permanent activation and it will lead to uncontrolled mitosis it will lead to cancer how many of you got it kindly say something if you didn't got it please ask Hmm? Please ask. Yes, I'm waiting for your response. So this is the RAS mutation. There are three types of RAS in human body. Say the examples which cancer it will have because of which which cancer human body which cancer it will occur. It depends on the type of the RAS. So K RAS, N RAS, H RAS. There are three type of RAS. K RAS, N RAS, H RAS. K RAS lead to colon, lung, and pancreatic cancer. N RAS lead to melanoma and AML. and hras lead to uh, bladder and kidney tumor but the mechanism is same whether whatever type of ras is, is it is it k ras n ras or h ras it will lead to corresponding cancer of human body but the mechanism behind that is this mechanism is this because the ras is mutated there is permanent activation of ras because the gtp gtp is activating protein gap is non functional this is the complete story got it got it can we go ahead ha huh? so coming on the second example abl bcr it is also an example of proto oncogene i told you na in proto oncogene i am give, going to give you two examples in detail so we have seen the classification the growth factors the growth receptors the signal transduction may we are taking two example one we have seen ras now the second is abl bcr gene let me tell you the history the complete um, uh, concept behind abl bcr gene right okay let me draw human cell how many genes we are having inside the human cell how many genes we are having inside the human cell we all know not genes i'm sorry how many chromosomes we are having so we are having 46 chromosomes or else let's say 23 pairs one and the same thing so let's say 23 pairs of chromosomes we are having pair number 1 pair number 2 pair number 3 4 5 likewise total 23 pairs are present in all the diploid cells of human agree currently i am interested in pair number 9 and pair number 22 so on the next page let me draw these two pair ha na so let me draw these two pair let me draw this is pair number 9 and this is pair number 22 i am interested on that ha na in all of us on pair number 9 we all have a gene the name of the gene is abl it is present in you me everyone it's normal gene it's normal gene that causes 
माइटोसिस अंडर कंट्रोल वैन एवर माइटोसिस इज रिक्वायर्ड दे डू दैट है ना एंड ऑन क्रोमोजोम ट्वेंटी टू वी हैव अनदर जीन दट इज नोन एज बी सी आर जीन इट इज ऑल्सो नॉर्मल इट ऑल्सो डूज द माइटोसिस अंडर कंट्रोल वैन एवर वी रिक्वायर इट इट इज अंडर फिजियोलॉजिकल स्टिमुलस सो वी हैव दीज जीन्स देर इज नो प्रॉब्लम द लाइफ इज गोइंग ऑन एवरीथिंग इज गुड राइट एंड दिस इज इन साइड द न्यूक्लियस लेट मी ड्रॉ दिस इज इन साइड द न्यूक्लियस इन साइड द न्यूक्लियस ऑल ट्वेंटी थ्री पेयर्स आर प्रेजेंट बट करेंटली आई हैव ड्रॉन ओनली टू पेयर्स ऑफ माई इंटरेस्ट नो वी आर सराउंडेड विथ नंबर ऑफ कार्सिनोजन्स ना सो एनी फिजिकल केमिकल और बायोलॉजिकल कार्सिनोजन is falling on this cell so what will happen it will lead to translocation in ras i told you point mutation inside the gap there was point mutation here i will say translocation what do you mean by translocation there is exchange hai na a portion of this chromosome is given to that in exchange of that a portion of that chromosome is given to that so that is the meaning of that is the meaning of translocation so in this translocation because of translocation is not normal its mutation it is due to carcinogen now this cell is exposed to some carcinogen maybe physical maybe chemical maybe some virus biological anything right now because of the carcinogen translocation is taking place so this portion of this chromosome chromosome number 9 will give abl to 22 so abl will move on 22 here like this this abl is moving on 22 but you will say ma'am on 22 bcr was already there yes so bcr was already there so abl bcr fusion occurs a new gene is formed because of the fusion of abl bcr it is known as hybrid gene or it is known as fusion gene it is deadly gene it is abnormal gene that cause uncontrolled mitosis because of this hybrid gene na an enzyme is formed ha na all genes express in the form of the enzymes i guess you know that with the help of transcription and translation all the genes express in the form of some enzymes so because of formation of this hybrid or fusion gene because of formation of this hybrid or fusion gene uh, abnormal tyrosine kinase enzyme is formed it's not normal it's abnormal and that will lead to uncontrolled mitosis individual abl was doing controlled mitosis individual bcr was doing controlled mitosis but whenever they fuse with each other and form a hybrid gene uncontrolled mitosis this cell will keep on dividing 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 and it will lead to cancer you got my point you must ask me i forgot to tell you this chromosome i told you exchange na so both should give something something to each other so 9 is giving abl to 20 22 you must ask me ma'am what 22 is giving in exchange to 9 uh, 22 is giving a portion to 9 which is not very important do not contain any important gene which i should mention right a portion is given to 9 also exchange is uh, balanced exchange is there this exchange is known as balanced translocation the translocation is balanced the portion given to 9 to 22 the same portion given to uh, 22 to 9 but the point is that 9 is giving a very important gene to 22 that is abl 22 is not giving some important gene to 9 on on 22 abl bcr hybrid is formed so among the two chromosomes the 22 number chromosome can you see this 22 number chromosome fusion is formed on 22 the hybrid is formed on 22 not on 9 among the two chromosome the two chromosomes are involved but fusion or hybrid is formed on 22 and that's why chromosome number 22 is known as philadelphia chromosome not 9 chromosome 22 is known as philadelphia philadelphia chromosome so it's very important question it is the philadelphia chromosome got it can we go ahead can we go ahead this is philadelphia chromosome okay chromosome number 22 is philadelphia chromosome okay it's very important question how translocation we mention it's a rule whenever we mention a translocation between any two chromosome write down small t not capital write down the small t in the bracket hai na in the bracket you have to write the number of the two chromosome it's 9 and between the two chromosome you have to apply a semicolon not comma it should be a semicolon dot and a comma it should be a semicolon so t bracket 922 this is the translocation this is a way we express this is the translocation so this is the complete story i told you abl bcr hybrid okay and the cancer which occurs we all know the typical cancer which occurs is cml chronic myeloid leukemia the only cancer which occurs due to this translocation so abl gene and bcr let me tell you so normally abl is present on 9 bcr is present on 22 as i told you hai na you can see see the normal hai na left hand side don't see the right hand side hai na see normal normally this is the 2 9 you can see and this is the 2 22 you can see you can see the 9 you can see the 22 in front of you on the 9 appreciate this abl on the 22 appreciate this bcr everything was good this was doing his job he, this was doing his job and they were doing the controlled mitosis both are proto oncogene both are functional but not over functional both are accelerators they will increase the speed but when signal will come then only they will increase the speed otherwise they will not increase but due to mutation translocation occur in translocation you can see in the same diagram this abl is going to 22 and on 22 the fusion is formed the fusion is formed bcr abl fusion the hybrid gene is formed and that is also accelerated but stuck at the highest speed so it keep on dividing keep on dividing because it form an abnormal 
enzyme the name of the enzyme is tyrosine kinase and the cancer because of this abnormal cell division is cml it leads to only one cancer the answer is cml please learn ha na in exchange of this in exchange of this the chromosome number 22 is giving a empty portion to 9 which is not having any important gene so chromosome number 22 is known as philadelphia chromosome ha na what is the name of the cancer it is having cml cml is happening what is the treatment of cml the targeted therapy i want to know so treatment or targeted therapy of cml is imitinib drug have you heard about imitinib imitinib the first targeted therapy we discovered after that many targeted therapies we discovered but the first targeted therapy we discovered is the magic drug imitinib drug and a imitinib inhibits this abnormal tyrosine kinase and it causes the apoptosis of all those cells in human body which is having this hybrid gene so that's why it is the targeted therapy ha na so before the discovery of imitinib the prognosis of cml was not very good the cure rate was not very good and currently the prognosis the cure rate is as good as 95% after imitinib but only thing it's a oral tablet it's the chemotherapy it's a uh, targeted therapy it's not iv it's not injectable it's oral daily patient has to take one tablet but only thing it's costly ha na but throughout the life the patient has to take you got my point so that is a thing that is a translocation during translocation abl which is normally present on 9 it is translocated to 22 on 22 bcr is already present so abl bcr hybrid is formed which is known as philadelphia chromosome the philadelphia chromosome is is chromosome number 22 because of which abnormal tyrosine kinase is formed that leads to uncontrolled mitosis that leads to cancer i tried my best to explain you the drug um, that uh, cancer here is cml and the drug is imitinib imitinib pe bhi bahut question aata hai so we have completed successfully proto onco gene how many of you got it proto onco gene how many of you got it the proto onco gene can we do some mcqs on that yes can we do some mcqs now we will do tumor suppressor genes the accelerators are over by the way the breaks are still pending ha na i have told you uh in accelerators i told you two genes here ras ka over activation and abl bcr hybrid gene ka over expression ras over expression leading to multiple cancer abl bcr over expression leading to cml only one cancer cml here i told you bladder kidney pancreas colon many cancer three type of ras is there k ras h ras and ras but here there are no further types only hybrid philadelphia chromosome is there you get many questions on that the accelerators are over now we have to see break fails whenever the break fails how does it leads to cancer what are tumor suppressor genes what are the types of tumor suppressor genes among them which one are important which one i am going to explain you in detail so we will see that before that we will solve some mcqs on that are you people ready for the mcqs ready for the mcqs fast i want fast answer i want fast answer and accurate also so read the question and tell me the answer the best example of proto onco gene which is activated by point mutation tell me so all the four options are uh, proto onco gene but tell me which is mutated by point mutation not translocation abl is also a proto onco gene but here we have translocation ras anmic elmic anmic elmic are also proto oncogene but i didn't told you here amplification takes pl takes place here amplification takes place ha na so point mutation occurs in ras the so point mutation the question is on the point mutation they all are proto oncogene but the point mutation occurs in ras so next question is in front of you philadelphia chromosome is an example of what philadelphia chromosome kya hota hai what is philadelphia chromosome how many of you know that so philadelphia chromosome seen in 922 translocation instead of writing 922 better better to write better to write t to t hi likho instead of 9 and 22 what is the gene on 9 on 9 it's abl and on 22 it's bcr so write down abl bcr translocation on 9 we have abl on 22 we have bcr so either saying 922 translocation better to be specific 9 pe bhi kaun sa 9 tell me the exact gene 22 pe kaun sa gene tell me the exact gene so abl bcr translocation so one and the same thing hai na do we have balanced translocation deletion non disjunction or duplication of course we all know it's balanced translocation it's a balanced translocation they are doing the exchange ha na balanced exchange theek hai the next question all are growth promoter oncogenes except they are asking the classification which of the following is not a oncogene they are asking except ha huh? you know the classification fgf is there or not there tgf alpha tgf beta and pdgf what is the correct answer i told you very clearly among tgf alpha and beta tgf alpha is a proto oncogene but tgf beta i am going to explain you the next it is the tumor suppressor gene it is the tumor suppressor gene i mean to say tgf alpha is accelerator and tgf beta is a break and both are tgf one is alpha one is beta so currently the answer is tgf beta and no it's not coming here the remaining one i can show you in the classification see fgf is there tgf alpha is there and pdgf is there the remaining three are there among the growth factors this is the classification i told you to learn for the proto oncogene 
Are you people there? Can we go ahead? The next question, MIG gene is what? Is it protein kinase inhibitor? Is it growth factor inhibitor? Is it GT pace or is it transcription activator? What is the correct answer here? What is the correct answer here? Yes, MIG gene is what? So MIG gene among the classification, where is MIG coming? You can see MIG is coming in transcription, nuclear transcription activator. I told you the five categories, now growth factor, growth receptor, signal transduction, the messengers, after that the nuclear transcription, MIG is coming in that. The correct answer here is that, okay. The next question in front of you, in MAPK pathway, the activation of RAS is counteracted by? Question is very simple, question is very simple, don't uh, confuse in the language, the question is ultra simple. They are asking, the RAS is already activated, normally how does it become inactivated? Normally how does it become inactivated? By protein kinase C, by GTPase activating protein, by phosphoridyl inositol or inositol triphosphate. Who causes inactivation of RAS? They are asking activation of RAS is counteracted by. So we know whenever the RAS is activated, uh, the RAS is already binded with GTP, then only it is activated. Now, if you want to inactivate it, you have to convert GTP to GDP, then it will become inactive, then it will become inactive. So, we want something which convert GTP to GDP. So, it is GTPase activating protein, GAP, it is known as GAP, GTPase activating protein, convert GTP to GDP and convert active RAS to inactive. So, question is repeated many times in many exams. Got my point? So, we are done with accelerators how many of you want me to teach the brakes also the tumor suppressor genes the tumor suppressor genes are the brakes can we continue with the brakes are you people there after that we have to see the carcinogenesis also the physical the chemical the biological we have to see the tumor markers and the diagnosis of the cancers also you want me to continue the session how many of you i would like to take a break after that i will continue the session so today uh, I, I would like to continue for two more hours, but I would like to take a break of half an hour. After that, we will continue on the same stream key, on the same YouTube channel where we are there. We will continue there. So currently, I guess it's 11.30. I will be back at 12, sharp 12, sharp 12. Uh, so I'm not ending the session. The session is same here only. So I will continue at 12 after half an hour. So it's a 30 minute break and from 12 we will continue for two more hours okay so after that i'm going to uh, come with the tumor suppressor gene don't dare to miss the initial portion if you are missing the initial portion at 12 o'clock you will not get uh, it ahead okay so tumor suppressor genes are the breaks in which i'm going to describe two important genes the retinoblastoma gene and p53 gene very important after that we are going to cover the carcinogenesis the physical chemical biological and in the end we will see the diagnosis of cancer there are seven eight ways we will describe all of them including tumor uh, markers and uh, paraneoplastic syndrome so don't go anywhere come back so i will be back again i say after half an hour at 12 sharp okay so let's take a break
Hello everyone, am I back? Are you people there? Can someone respond in the chat box if I am? Hello everyone, am I back? Are you people there? I guess I am clearly visible and audible. Wait a minute. Can we start the class? Are you people there? Can we go ahead? Just a second. Let me continue. Okay, so we have already covered proto-oncogenes that is the accelerators in the last session. I mean in the morning. And now we are going to cover the breaks. That is tumor suppressor genes. So this diagram you can already understand. I have already explained you this diagram. You can see two cells in front of you. In the first cell you can see whenever growth factor is coming. It is binding with the growth receptor. Here growth factor is present. The stimulus is present. It is binding with the growth receptor. It is causing the stimulation of a gene. The name of the gene is proto-oncogene. And that causes mitosis. Right. So it is like the accelerator due to the mutation if there is if there is overstimulation of this, we have already seen the examples there, the RAS and ABLBCR. Okay. And now we are going to discuss the breaks that is tumor suppressor gene. Normally, the, the function of the tumor suppressor gene is to inhibit the mitosis. And now the breaks are non-functional. The tumor suppressor gene are non-functional because in them loss of function mutation have taken place. So they are inhibited. They are non-functional. So breaks are not functioning. So mitosis again will be uncontrolled and leads to cancer. So let's start tumor suppressor gene. These are the breaks and now they are not applied they are non-functional there is loss of function mutation in them right so let me tell you the classification important one we will see in detail so we will see the retinoblastoma and p53 in detail the ultra too important i told you tgf alpha and beta i told you tgf alpha is a proto-oncogene but tgf beta is a tumor suppressor gene this is a very important point you have to take care of apart from that there is apc gene which leads to cancer colon and barca 1 barca 2 which leads to breast cancer ovary cancer vhl von hippel lenedu gene which leads to renal cell carcinoma wt1 wilms tumor 1 and 2 leads to wilms tumor in the children and nf12 that is neurofibromatosis 1 and 2 leads to neurofibromatosis 1 and 2 so let's start with the detail of the two tumor suppressor genes retinoblastoma and p53 so let me start with retinoblastoma first okay it's difficult to understand i will try my best retinoblastoma present on chromosome number 13 as i told you humans have total 23 pairs of chromosome in all the cells humans have 23 pairs and 46 chromosomes are 23 pairs so pair number one two three four five likewise we have all the pairs i am interested in pair number 13 on pair we all chromosomes are in pairs now so pair number 13 we have retinoblastoma gene i mean to say we have two copies of retinoblastoma gene in each cell each and every cell have two copies of retinoblastoma gene on the two alleles, on the two, two chromosomes of the chromosome number 13 pair. Okay, so 13 pb you have to learn the exact location. 13 pb for every chromosome we have p arm and we have q arm. Now you may be knowing there is a centromere and there are two arms, the p and the q. Hana? So which arm chromosome number 13 is present? Uh, chromosome number 13 q arm it is present and the exact location is 14 so because now sometime you get question 13 q 14 14 q 13 13 p 14 and 14 p 13 so they ask you to mark the exact location of the retinoblastoma gene your four options are in front of you so you get confused between 13 and 14 you must be knowing the number of the chromosome is 13 okay the arm is q not p okay and exact location is 14 so it's 13 q 14 it's a very important pyq so among all the tumor suppressor gene it is the most important uh, it is the first tumor suppressor gene to be discovered and most common is p53 most common is not retinoblastoma the most common among the all retinoblastoma uh, all tumor suppressor gene to be uh, inhibited or to be mutated is p53 but the first to discover is retinoblastoma so i will tell you two scenarios again first normally how does normally it do the function of the break and it inhibits cell division, it inhibits mitosis. How does normally it do so? Okay, but during mutation, the breaks are non-functional. It do not inhibit the cell mitosis, so uncontrolled mitosis leads to cancer. Please understand, now I am telling you the tumor suppressor gene. Normally, their function is to inhibit the cell division. Now, you can see the two scenarios in front of you. Let me explain the two scenarios, then I will draw in the form of the diagram also. Okay, you can see... Uh, so you can see when growth inhibitors are coming when growth inhibitors are coming at that time the retinoblastoma gene become hypophosphorylated it become active and it will hold elongation factor 2 which is required for mitosis since it is holding since it is holding there is a block in the mitosis Anna, let me draw it you will understand it give me few minutes i will explain you everything and when my growth factor is there it will become non-functional because its hyperphosphorylation takes place and it will release the elongation factor 2 and um, the cell division takes place. Let me draw in the form of the diagram. Let me draw two cells in front of you. 
these are the nucleus okay these are the cells okay you can say inside the cell i am directly drawing the nucleus in the nucleus i am interested in chromosome number 13 ka pair so this is pair of chromosome number 13 this is pair of chromosome number 13 here also here also okay on them this is the retinoblastoma gene this is the retinoblastoma gene this is retinoblastoma gene you can see okay two copies in each cell i told you so whenever growth inhibitor is coming at that time it become functional because it is the break now and whenever growth factor is coming it become non-functional it become non-functional so whenever growth inhibitor is coming at that time at that time there is hypophosphorylation hypophosphorylation very few phosphates will bind here and it will become active because of hypophosphorylation it will become active whenever it is active now please understand whenever it is active it will hold a factor the name of the factor is elongation factor 2 elongation factor 2 is required for mitosis since elongation factor 2 is not free mitosis nahi hoga hindi mein kahun to ye pakad ke baith jayenge elongation factor 2 ko ki hum active hain aur hum tujhe nahi chhodenge elongation factor 2 chhutega nahi to mitosis nahi hoga elongation factor 2 is required for mitosis since elongation factor 2 is holded i have used the word hold they are holding it very tightly they are not releasing it so that's why there is no mitosis there are, there is no mitosis so my point is that whenever Whenever the retinoblastoma gene is active, mitosis do not take place. So they are doing their job. They are break. Whenever the, we apply the break, speed do not increase. The guard is stop. The vehicle stop. The car stop. In the same way, whenever the retinoblastoma gene is functional, mitosis do not take place. You got my point. Now, whenever growth factor is coming at that time, at that time there is hyperphosphorylation of the retinoblastoma gene. Hyperphosphorylation leads to inactivation. You can understand like for RAS gene, those who are attending my session from the beginning, they can understand. When RAS is bind with GDP, it is non-functional. When it is bind with GTP, it becomes functional. In the same way, when retinoblastoma gene is hypophosphorylated, it is functional. When it is hyperphosphorylated, it is non-functional. So there is hyperphosphorylation, it will become inactive. Since it will become inactive, it will release, it will release loose elongation factor 2. It will release elongation factor 2. You go and do your job. We don't want to hold you. Elongation factor do and do the mitosis. So mitosis will take place. So my point is that whenever retinoblastoma gene is functional, no mitosis takes place. Whenever it is non-functional, mitosis takes place. You got my point? How many of you got it? You got it? So whenever there is mutation, what happens? This is normal. In my body, in your body, everyone's body, chromosome number 13, the retinoblastoma gene is taking care of our mitosis. So whenever inside our cells, on our cells, uh, growth factors are coming, uh, they become non-functional, they become inactive. Whenever growth inhibitors are coming, they become active and they inhibit the mitosis like this. They are doing the job of the brain. But during mutation, they permanently become, they permanently become inactive. They permanently loss of function mutation is there. So permanently they become hyperphosphorylated. Now whether growth inhibitor is coming, growth factor is coming doesn't matter. They are permanently inactivated and permanently it is leading to uncontrolled mitosis leading to cancer. How many of you got it? Kindly say something, indicate something that you got it. Huh? So this is the complete story of the retinoblastoma gene. So whenever retinoblastoma gene is hypophosphorylated, you can see in the diagram also, it is holding. This is elongation factor 2. Let me show you where is elongation factor. This is elongation factor 2. So it is hold it. It is hold it tightly by the gene. Can you see where is the gene? Let me show you the gene. This is the gene. This is retinoblastoma gene. It is holding the red one, the elongation factor 2. Since it is only two phosphates are there, hypophosphorylated. But whenever it is hyperphosphorylated, you can see multiple phosphates are there. So it become loose. It become inactive. And it is releasing the elongation factor 2. You can see here, elongation factor 2 is loose. It is going. It is going and doing the it is doing the mitosis. So this is the complete story. You got it? So let me write it for you, the three scenarios. The three scenarios what happens normally whenever growth inhibitors are coming what happens normally whenever growth factors are coming and what happens during mutation these two scenarios are normal this is normal this is normal so whenever growth inhibitor is coming at that time retinoblastoma is hypophosphorylated since it is hypophosphorylated so it is active since it is active so it is holding it is holding elongation factor 2 since elongation factor 2 is not free no mitosis no mitosis takes place so this is normal Whenever growth factor is coming at that time, retinoblastoma gene become hyperphosphorylated. Instead of hypo, it become hyperphosphorylated. So instead of active, it become inactive. It become inactive. Instead of holding elongation factor 2, it release. It release elongation factor 2. So elongation factor 2 will go and it will cause the mitosis. This is normal. But during mutation, there is permanent 
परमानेंट हाइपर फॉस्फोरेशन ऑफ रेटिनल ब्लास्टोमा जीन सो वेदर दिस इज कमिंग और दिस इज कमिंग डजेंट मैटर सिंस इट इज परमानेंटली हाइपर फॉस्फोर रिलेटेड इट इज परमानेंटली इनएक्टिव परमानेंटली रिलीज एलॉन्गेशन फैक्टर टू इट विल लीड टू अनकंट्रोल माइटोसिस इट विल लीड टू कैंसर सो दिस इज द कंप्लीट स्टोरी रिगार्डिंग रेटिनो ब्लास्टोमा जीन यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड द सेम थिंग इज रिटर्न सो वैन एवर ग्रोथ ग्रोथ इनिबिटर्स आर कमिंग हाइपो फॉस्फोरेशन इट्स एक्टिव इट्स होल्डिंग इट फॉर्मिंग अ कॉम्प्लेक्स विद एलॉन्गेशन फैक्टर टू नो माइटोसिस इट्स नोन एज ब्लॉक and whenever growth factor is coming there is hyperphosphorylation it become inactive it become loose it releases elongation factor 2 it releases it dissociate and it will cause the mitosis and mutation permanent inactivation so uncontrolled mitosis leads to cancer right so the same thing is written now coming on the uh, next gene that is p53 gene p53 gene have a double role what is the double role i told you there are four types of genes what are the four types of genes which regulate the neoplasia can you tell me at the beginning of the lecture he only i told you the four types of the genes ones are accelerator one are brake one are mechanics and one are destroyers one are destroyers imagine i am having a car in which the accelerators are proto oncogene okay learn proto oncogene the brakes are tumor suppressor gene the mechanics are dna repair gene they do the repair dna repair gene and the destroyers are apoptotic regulatory genes apoptotic regulatory gene so why does cancer occur imagine we are driving a car in which the accelerator got stuck at the highest speed so proto oncogene may gain of function mutation or the brakes got fail they are under activated so there is loss of function in tumor suppressor gene and the mechanics are non functional so dna repair gene also loss of function and the destroyers are not destroying the car that is apoptotic regulatory genes are also loss of function so i am talking currently of p53 gene so p53 gene acts as a brake as well as a mechanic P53 gene have a double role. It's brake also, it's mechanic also. I mean to say, it's tumor suppressor gene as well as DNA repair gene. To understand, so it is having a double role. It 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 uh, apply the brake also and it does the repair also. Whatever is damaged, it does the repair. So it is present on chromosome number 17. It's a PYQ. It's a tumor suppressor gene. It is the most common tumor suppressor gene which get mutated among all. It is known as guardian of genome or molecular policeman. Why it is said so? I will tell you the reason. i will tell you the reason right so it is having a double role it is a tumor suppressor gene as well as dna repair gene you have to understand that so let me tell you what happens normally i will draw a, a cell for you i will draw a cell for you okay so imagine there is a cell this is a nucleus of the cell in the nucleus this is a dna in the dna on chromosome number 17 this is p53 gene present normally it's not active normally it's not active you know whenever there is uv ray exposure on the cell there is uv ray exposure so what does the uv ray causes uv ray causes multiple dna damage multiple dna damage at multiple places at that time it become active it become active it will form a protein the protein p53 will go in the cytoplasm p53 gene form a protein p53 protein will go in the cytoplasm now this p53 protein have two assistant proteins what are the two assistant proteins please understand p21 and gadd these are the two assistant proteins which work under p53 ha na what does they do they have double role as i told you na so p p21 uh will do the cell cycle arrest this will do the cell cycle arrest this cell cannot divide because uv rays have fallen and it is having multiple damage in the dna multiple places places dna damage is there so dna is not good it is it is having multiple damage and it can be a cancer cell we cannot allow it to do the cell division so it is doing the arrest and the other assistant that is gadd meanwhile will do the repair it will do the repair ha na so you can understand let me tell you a story like that ha na so let me tell you a story so imagine you are moving by car from city a to city b this is city a this is city b do you have check nakas in between you all be knowing ha na check nakas are there at check nakas who is there policemen are sitting and what does they do they check your car they check your vehicle and if you are not carrying anything illegal you must say so car is allowed to go from one city to another so these are the check nakas you can say p53 is acting like a check naka ha na so whenever the cell is moving in the cell division from g1 to s you know g1 s g2 m we have four phases in the mitosis now so whenever the cell is moving from g1 to s so this is a check naka p53 is doing the checking no first show me your dna if your dna is mutated i will not allow you if your dna is normal you can go ahead so if the dna is normal the cell will pass all the cells have to pass through this check naka you cannot escape any city one city to another without passing a check naka legally you cannot do so right in the cell same way if any cell is doing the cell division passing from g1 to s to g2 to m they have to pass through the check naka by check naka i always mean p53 so p53 will do the checking inside the cell show me your dna if your dna is normal you are allowed 
बट इफ यूर डी एन ए इज म्यूटेटेड ही विल कॉल टू हवलदार्स है ना ही विल कॉल टू असिस्टेंट पुलिस मैन विच टू असिस्टेंट पुलिस मैन पी ट्वेंटी वन एंड जी ए डी डी वॉट डज दे डू पी ट्वेंटी वन विल होल्ड द कार यू हैव समथिंग इ लीगल यू हैव टू स्टे देयर यू कैनॉट रन सो ही इज जस्ट होल्डिंग एंड वॉट इज जी ए डी डी डूइंग ट्राइंग टू रिपेयर रिपेयर मीन्स वॉट एवर इज इ लीगल दैट इज क्लियरेंस क्लियरेंस इज देयर सो दैट इज That is repair. So you can understand the two assistant what they are doing. One is holding, another is doing the repair. Once ये ये hold कब तक करेगा? Till what time P twenty one will hold? Till the repair is successful. Now G A D D have two option. Either the repair successful or unsuccessful. है ना? If the repair is successful, P twenty one everyone will destroy and they will allow the car to move ahead because now its repair is successful. D N A is normal. Illegal thing is removed. So it is allowed to go. Okay. But if the repair is not successful, if damage is very severe, sometimes DNA damage is very severe, and uh, doing repair is not possible. So at that time, what will happen? G A D D will call another protein. The name of protein is Bax. Bax, Bath, Bim. They will cause the apoptosis of this cell. Now, if this car inside this illegal material is too much and unable to do the clearance, what they will do? They will call Bax, another assistant, and that will destroy the car. That will destroy the car. So this is a complete story in the form of the story you can learn. How many of you got the story? So this is the story. Whenever there is a DNA damage in the cell, especially due to UV light, the P53 will come and accumulate. It will call its two assistant. Never forget the name of the two assistants. Who are the two assistants under P53? Name them. P53 have two assistants, P21 and G A D D. What does they do? Both of them have different role. Both of them. So P21 will stop the car, hold the car. You cannot move ahead. I am standing in front of you. You just uh, cooperate with us and stand here only. You are having something illegal in your car, right? And G A D D will do the repair. Repair means the clearance of the illegal material. Now two options: either successful or unsuccessful. If successful. Everyone will be destroyed, and they will allow the car to go ahead. Hana, the policeman will go, and they will allow the car to go and pass the check naka. But if it is unsuccessful, they will call box, and they will do the apoptosis. Kindly say, Ayush, others, got it? Yes. P twenty one and G A D D. Learn the full form of P twenty one is P twenty one. Learn the full form of G A D D. <coughs> G A D D. Growth arrest. Growth arrest and DNA damage. G A D D. Growth arrest and DNA damage. If you learn the full form, it's good. Otherwise, also you can say G A D D. So, can I say the two assistants are the double role of P fifty three? What is the double role? At one time, I'm saying it is doing the cell arrest. Cell arrest means no cell division. So, it is tumor suppressor gene. On the other hand, G A D D is doing repair. So, I'm saying it's the mechanic that is DNA repair gene. So, that's why P fifty three is two two category. It's break also. It's mechanic also. तो बेसिकली पी ट्वेंटी वन इज इट्स ब्रेक उसके दो असिस्टेंट है ना एक ब्रेक का काम कर रहा है और एक मैकेनिक का काम कर रहा है दिस जी डी इज डूइंग द रिपेयर सो दैट्स दैट इज द मैकेनिक ऑफ पी फिफ्टी थ्री एंड पी ट्वेंटी वन इज डूइंग द अरेस्ट सो दैट इज द ब्रेक सो पी फिफ्टी थ्री इज हैविंग टू असिस्टेंट विथ हिम द टू असिस्टेंट हवलदार साइकॉल है ना सो पी ट्वेंटी वन इज लाइक द ब्रेक अपलाइंग द ब्रेक टू द कार यू कैनॉट मूव द कार यू कैनॉट रन अपलाई ब्रेक हियर आई एम अ ब्रेक आई एम अपलाइंग यूर ब्रेक and gadd is doing the repair repair means removing all the things that is illegal i mean uh, repairing the damaged dna you can understand like a story got it everyone got it can we go ahead yes so that is the complete story of the p53 thankfully god has given p53 to all of us in all of us in all of our cell on chromosome number 17 p53 is present two copies of p53 is present we are having two copies of 17 in every cell so two copies of p53 are present in all of our cell we know that okay so whenever we are exposed to uv rays we don't worry we say p53 will take care of so who is p53 can i say he is the molecular policeman because he is sitting at the check naka every cell passing from g1 to s cannot go from g1 to s without doing the checking the checking is of the dna checking the dna is damaged or not damaged mutated or non mutated non mutated clearance mutated call the two havaldars call the two assistants i mean and we will complete the process like that it is known as molecular policeman it is known as guardian of the genome so please learn these two names the molecular policeman and the guardian of the genome got it now imagine a person in which p53 is absent Uh, P53 is non-functional. It is mutated. What will happen if the P53 is mutated? Whenever the cell will pass from G1 to S, imagine a cell is passing from G1 to S, and there is no check naka. There is no check naka. P53 is absent. So obviously the two assistants are also absent. No P21, no GADD. Everyone is absent. So imagine if this cell is having something illegal. I mean the DNA is already damaged due to UV light. DNA damage is there. So there is no one to stop it. There is no one to repair it. Na to stop karne wala hai, na to repair karne wala hai. Neither break is there nor mechanic is there. So we will we are allowing the damaged DNA to move from G1 to S and complete the mitosis. 
So from 1 to 2, 2 to 4, 4 to 6, 6 to 8, they will form a cluster of cells and that is neoplasia. The uncontrolled, uncontrolled uh, mitosis of abnormal cell. So this is how it will lead to cancer. Hana? So whenever there is mutation in P53, so damaged DNA cell, there is P53 is not activated. So neither cell arrest, no DNA repair because neither P21 is functional nor GADD is functional. None of the two assistant is functional. So no break, no break is there and uh, no repair is there no break no repair so basically we are allowing the mutated cell to do the expansion to do the cell division and it will lead to cancer i tried my best to explain you in the simplest language now learn a syndrome here on which frequently question is asked lifroni syndrome lifroni syndrome in which the person is having one mutated copy of p53 Hannah. so first hit is already there and second hit may inactivate the normal copy first copy is already mutated in them since birth Second copy, whenever in inactivated, they will, they will have multiple cancers. They have sarcoma, breast cancer, leukemia, brain tumor. So, multiple cancers will occur. That is known as Lifroni syndrome. Got it? So, can we go ahead? Can we go ahead? Huh? So, we will do some MCQs on um, tumor suppressor gene. And after that, we will move on the carcinogenesis. The first question is in front of you. I want you to participate and tell me the correct answer. What is, which of the following is an example of tumor suppressor gene? Make gene, EGFR gene, RAS gene or retinoblastoma gene? Question is super simple. You all can tell me the answer. Which of the following is an example of tumor suppressor gene? Yes, of course. The correct answer is retinoblastoma. Just now I taught you. The remaining, remaining three are the proto-oncogene. You can check the classification. MIC, RAS, EGFR, these all are proto-oncogene. Retinoblastoma is a tumor suppressor gene. Got it? I am asking tumor suppressor gene. Okay. Carcinoma due to inherited mutation. Of P53 proto oncogene is known as uh, with syndrome. One of the copy of P53 is inheritedly mutated. Other copy will mutate after birth. So is it Lifroni syndrome, familial adenome, uh, matis polyposis, retinoblastoma, or osteosarcoma? What is the correct answer? Of course, it's the correct answer is Lifroni syndrome. Just now I taught you. One more question: Hereditary retinoblastoma develops following chromosomal deletion of which which gene? So they are basically asking retinoblastoma gene location. What is the exact location of retinoblastoma gene? I told you. Is it the chromosome number 13 or 14? And the location is 14 or 13? And arm is Q or P? You have to decide that. Yes, the correct answer is 13 Q 14. It's 13 Q 14. Never forget the exact location. You can see all the four options are very closely related. If someone do not know the exact location, you can get uh, confused in the exam. So instead of Q, you can do P or you can do some other mistake. So it's 13 Q 14. Never, never forget. Yes, absolutely right. Uh, Vivek, Ajit. Ayush, absolutely right. Okay. Okay. Coming to the next question. Just a second. Okay. We are moving ahead. Which of the following is known as guardian of the genome? Which of the following is known as guardian of the genome, of course, or molecular policeman also? Both the answers are same. The correct answer is P53. Frequently asked question, but very easy question. So, let's start the next concept, carcinogens and carcinogenesis. We are done with the molecular level or uh, genetic uh, regulators of the neoplasia. We have seen what are proto-oncogenes. We have seen what are tumor suppressor genes. We have seen their definition, their classification and important examples we have described in detail. How they function normally and how uh, during mutation they lead to cancer. Now, it's time to study carcinogens and carcinogenesis. What do you mean by carcinogens and carcinogenesis? Now, this diagram you can well understand. Hana. So, proto-oncogenes are there, they are accelerator and tumor suppressor genes are there, they are the breaks. So, I am saying there is gain of function mutation in proto-oncogene or loss of function mutation in tumor suppressor gene. Overactivation of proto-oncogene or underactivation of the breaks. That will lead to uncontrolled growth and cancer. Ma you should ask me a question ma'am, who is doing so? Who is doing this mutation? Who, who is doing this mutation? There should be some agent now. Nah? There should be some agent. It can be physical agent, it can be chemical agent, it can be biological agent. There shall be some, be some agent now which causing uh, mutation inside this. Mutation, both mutation I am talking. The proto-oncogene as well as tumor suppressor gene as well as a DNA repair gene and apoptosis um, regulatory gene. In all of them, the mutation is caused by some agent. That agent can be physical, chemical, biological and it is known as carcinogen. And the mechanism of mutation is known as carcinogenesis. So let's study carcinogen and carcinogenesis. As I told you, there are three types of carcinogens, chemical, physical, biological. We will see their details one by one. These are the agents that causes mutation. That causes mutation. Physical, chemical, biological, they causes mutation. Mutation of what? Either proto-oncogene 
और ट्यूमर सप्रेसर जीन है ना इन टोटो ऑनको जीन दे कॉज गेन ऑफ फंक्शन म्यूटेशन इन ट्यूमर सप्रेसर जीन दे कॉज लॉस ऑफ फंक्शन म्यूटेशन बट दीज आर द एजेंट्स विच कॉज म्यूटेशन तो फर्स्ट वी विल सी फिजिकल देन वी विल सी केमिकल फाइनली वी विल सी बायोलॉजिकल सो लेट स्टार्ट विथ फिजिकल कार्सनोजनासस लेट स्टार्ट विथ फिजिकल कार्सनोजनासस इन फिजिकल कार्सनोज वॉट यू मीन बाई फिजिकल द रेज आर देयर विच कॉज इज म्यूटेशन देर आर टू टाइप ऑफ रेज यू वी एंड आई आर यू वी अल्ट्रा वॉलेट रेस आई आर आयोनाइजिंग रेडिएशन रेस बोथ ऑफ दैम आर म्यूटाजेनिक माइंड माई वर्ड्स बोथ ऑफ दैम आर म्यूटाजेनिक दे कैन कॉज म्यूटेशन इन ह्यूमन सेल एंड दे कैन कॉज द कैंसर्स राइट सो वी विल सी देयर सोर्स फ्रॉम वेयर वी गेट यू वी एंड आई आर रेज इन अवर एनवायरमेंट है ना नंबर टू नंबर टू वट इज द मेकानिजम हाउ डज दे कॉज एक्जैक्टली कैंसर नंबर टू एंड नंबर थ्री नेम द कैंसर्स इन ह्यूमन बॉडी फ्रॉम हैड टू टू विच कैंसर्स दे कॉज सो फॉर बोथ ऑफ दैम टेल मी थ्री थ्री थिंग्स देयर सोर्स देयर मेकानिजम and their cancers in human body examples so we will make a table in the end let's start with uv rays uv rays from where you we get uv rays we get uv rays from the sunlight we get sunlight on the earth na so this is our earth on the earth the sunlight falls like this hai na so basically in the sunlight there are three type of uv rays uva uvb uvc there are three types earth is surrounded by ozone we all know that so c is filtered in the ozone c do not reach the earth c do not reach the earth only a and b reaches the earth So in the sunlight, whatever, whenever we are exposed to sunlight, we are exposing ourselves to two type of UV A and UV B. They have different wavelength. You can learn the wavelength if you wish. C do not reach the earth because C get filtered by the ozone. So from A and B, who is mutagenic? B for bad. Learn like that. B अच्छा नहीं है. B for bad. It's bad for human. It causes cancers in human. A do not cause cancer. A is good. A helps us in the synthesis or activation of vitamin D in the body. So we know sunlight is good for us, but only for 15 minutes in a day. If you are exposed too much in the sunlight, maybe B may cause cancer, है ना? So it is for 15 to 20 minutes exposure is good, but mo not more than that. So the good part is A, but the bad part is B. You got my point. You get many questions on B. U B B is bad. Okay. You can learn the wavelength. 280 to 320. This one is bad, but 320 to 400 nanometer. This one is good. This one is uh, useful for vitamin D activation, but this one causes cancer. C do not reach the earth, right? So this is the source. My point is that source is sunlight. Source is sunlight. Now, so which cancers it causes? It causes only skin cancer because sunlight falls on the skin. Now, so basically it causes only skin cancer. Skin cancer. Three type of skin cancer: squamous cell carcinoma of the skin. basal cell carcinoma of the skin and melanoma of the skin please learn the three type of the cancers squamous cell carcinoma basal cell carcinoma and melanoma the three type of skin cancers it causes the most common among them is basal cell carcinoma among the three the most common is the basal cell carcinoma you got my point what is the mechanism imagine this is a skin cell let me draw keratinocyte one of the skin cell this is the nucleus of the skin cell and inside the nucleus this is the dna we all know dna is double stranded structure ha na in the double strand there are two strands the two complementary strands are there so in the complementary strands uh, nucleotides bonding is there we have four nucleotides na adenine guanine cytosin and thymidine you know which forms bonds with that i mean to say here purine form bonds with pyrimidine we know that what is purine what is pyrimidine so whenever this cell is exposed to uv uv light to be specific uv b not uv a b for bad So what happens? Pyrimidine, pyrimidine will form dimer. Pyrimidine, pyrimidine dimer is formed. Pyrimidine, pyrimidine dimer. It is not normal. Normally we don't have this dimer. Pyrimidine, pyrimidine dimer will lead to mutation. So exact cause of mutation. So whatever gene present at this location, it can be a proto onco gene, it can be a tumor suppressor gene that will undergo mutation. You got my point. This is the exact. So learn one word: pyrimidine dimers. So UV light causes pyrimidine, pyrimidine dimer formation, and that leads to mutation. that leads to mutation and that leads to cancer it can be proto oncogene it can be tumor suppressor gene so coming on the ir radiation what was the source in uv light the source in uv light was sunlight but in ir ionizing radiation it is not present in sunlight it is alpha rays beta rays gamma rays or x rays and no, x rays so because of this exposure uh, uh, ir exposure can be there what cancers it causes it causes all leukemias how many type of leukemias are there there are four types of leukemias acute and chronic myeloid and lymphoid so it's uh, aml cml all cll you may be knowing the four types it causes all type of new leukemia except cll except it do not cause cll it never causes cll except cll it causes so it causes all types of leukemia except cll please learn 
एक्सेप्ट सी एल एल इट कॉजेज ऑल टाइप्स ऑफ ल्यूकेमिया से यस यू गॉट इट नंबर वन एक्सेप्शन पे बहुत क्वेश्चन आता है नंबर टू इट कॉजेज ऑल टाइप ऑफ थेरेट ट्यूमर्स हाउ मनी टाइप ऑफ थेरेट ट्यूमर्स यू नो इट्स पैपिलरी इट्स फॉलिकुलर इट मेड्यूलरी इट्स एना प्लास्टिक सो ऑल फोर कैन बी कॉज द थेरेट ट्यूमर्स है ना मोस्ट कॉमनली पैपिलरी बट इट कॉजेज ऑल एंड अदर्स में देर आर मैनी कैंसर्स डोंट लर्न दैट स्पेशली मैक्सिमम सेंसिटिविटी इज एट जी टू फेस जी टू फेस जी वन एस जी टू एम देर आर फोर फेसेज ना जी वन एस जी टू एम सो एट जी टू फेस द सेल इज मैक्सिमम सेंसिटिव टू आई आर रेडिएशन इट्स ऑल्सो अ पी वाई क्यू राइट सो सी एल एल इज द ओनली ल्यूकेमिया विच इज नॉट कॉज्ड बाय आई आर रिमेनिंग दिस ऑल द ल्यूकेमियाज कैन बी कॉज्ड बाय आई आर वॉट इज द मेकेनिज्म हियर लेट मी ड्रॉ सेल अगेन so this is a cell this is the nucleus of the cell this is the dna of the cell now in the cell we all know cell cytoplasm is water h2o hoh so whenever ir radiation is falling on the cell na no? ionizing radiation which is present in alpha beta gamma or x ray so ionizing radiation is falling it converts the water into free radicals like o2 negative hai na h2o2 oh negative the free radicals are formed and these free radicals will cause the mutation these free radicals will cause the mutation in the dna these are mutagenic and that leads to the cancer so here the cause of the mutation is formation of free radical from the water so this is the thing let me compare the both i will compare in the end okay so this is the radiation induced cancer what we have learned let me write it instead of showing so what we have learned who will tell me tell me uv and tell me ir ha no uv and ir the two type of rays tell me their source source of each of them from where you get tell me the cancers which cancers they causes and tell me the mechanism what is the exact mechanism the mechanism you have to tell me here in the cell what exactly they are doing how they are causing mutations and leading to the cancer this is a double stranded dna this is a how they cause mutation ha huh? so tell me tell me the source first so source here is sunlight uv ka source is sunlight sunlight may be a b c but b is bad so uv b is bad that is that is mutagenic a do not cause harm it is useful c do not reach the earth and uh, ir ka source hai x ray alpha ray beta ray gamma ray like that got it say yes ha huh? cancers here it causes only skin cancer theek hai skin cancer three types basal cell carcinoma most common most common squamous cell carcinoma and melanoma here it causes leukemia number 1 thyroid cancer number 2 learn two things all leukemia all leukemia it causes except cll and all thyroid cancer it causes but most commonly papillary right that you have to learn now mechanism is important in both of them here uv is falling on the cell here ir is falling on the cell so what does it do so uv causes pyrimidine pyrimidine dimer formation that's why it is mutagenic and ir causes water to get converted into free radicals and free radicals will cause the mutation so please be very specific hai na they can ask you the mechanism of any of them they can ask you the cancers caused by them any of them and the sources of any of them so that's all about uh the physical carcinogenesis okay uv light ir right you can see the same thing here only skin cancers are there here leukemias and thyroid cancer see the mechanism pyrimidine dimer formation free radical formation how many of you got it ha huh? so that is a thing that is a thing so we will solve some mcqs how many type of blood cells are present in the blood how many type of cells are present there are rbcs there are platelets and there are five type of wbcs there are five type of wbcs ha huh? so blood cells blood cells may we have rbcs we have platelet and wbcs wbcs are of two type granulocytes and agranulocytes the granulocytes have granules in them ah so it's neutrophil eosinophil basophil and agranulocytes don't have granules in them it's monocyte and lymphocyte among the blood cells who is most radio sensitive uv and ir both most radio sensitive i'm asking most radio sensitive what is the answer most radio sensitive is lymphocyte it's a pvq and which is the least radio sensitive answer is platelet please learn very specifically so please draw like this and please learn learn very carefully okay ha huh? so yes absolutely right here lymphocyte is the most radio sensitive and platelet is the least radio sensitive so that's all about radio sensitivity lymphocyte platelet most radio sensitive least radio sensitive very important pvqs among the blood cells so let's solve some mcqs based on that yes absolutely right it's very important for um, fmg so of course many questions come from the oncology okay so let's continue so the question is in front of you skin cancers developed due to ex sun sunlight exposure of which uv uv a uv b uv c uv d which uv causes skin cancer how many types of uv you know 
There are three types of UV, UVA, UVB, UVC. UVC do not reach the earth because of the ozone filtration. From A and B, which causes cancer? Come on. Yes, absolutely right, Ayush, absolutely right. B is bad because it is causing cancer. Learn like that. B is bad. You will never forget. Correct answer is UVB. So coming on the next question, one of the following leukemia almost never develops after radiation. Radiation, I am not mentioning which radiation, UV or IR. But radiation induced leukemia, which of the following is not after radiation? It's AML, CML, ALL or CLL. AML, CML, ALL or CLL, which do not occur after uh, radiation exposure. Yes, absolutely right. The correct answer is CLL. CLL never occurs after IR and the remaining three can occur after ionizing radiation exposure. Right. Coming on the next question. The next question is in front of you. UV radiation has which of the following effects on the cell? What does UV radiation call, causes? It prevents the formation of pyri, pyrolidin dimer. It stimulates the formation of pyrimidin dimer. It prevents the formation of purin dimer or all of the above. What exactly it does? Yes, absolutely right, uh, Shubhan. Absolutely right. It stimulates the formation of pyrimidin dimer. Pyrimidin, pyrimidin dimer formation. I told you to be specific. Anna? It's not pyrolidin. Don't get confused. It's pyrimidin. Purin and pyrimidin wala pyrimidin. So please learn. The correct answer here is B and you all are right. Right. We are done with physical carcinogenesis. I guess you all got it. So coming on the chemical carcinogenesis now. So let's start the chemical carcinogenesis. Just a second. Okay. So chemical carcinogenesis. What do you mean by chemical carcinogenesis? We eat, we drink, we inhale many chemicals present in our environment. So many chemicals leads to cancer. Now how does any chemical leads to cancer? Let's take an example of smoke. Smoking leads to lung cancer, we all know. Smoking leads to lung cancer. Is there is any chemical particular present in the smoke that leads to lung cancer? How smoking leads to lung cancer? Smoking don't have any rays, it's not physical. It don't have any virus, bacteria, it's not biological. So, of course, it's chemical. So, smoke have tar inside that. The smoke have tar and that tar is the carcinogenic chemical. Hannah? Smoke have two things inside that. Smoke. Smoke is not at all useful. <laughs> the smoking ka jo smoke, hai na? smoke of smoking. It is having two things inside that. It is having nicotine and it is having tar. It is having tar. Anna? So, nicotine is giving the pleasurable effects. After smoking, the addiction is there. Usually, people have addiction because the after smoking, people feel have like having a, some pleasurable effect. And because of that pleasurable effect, they cannot quit the smoking very easily. They become addicted to that. This is because of nicotine. That's why nicotine chewing gums are available to decrease the addiction gradually. Anna? And tar is also there. So, nicotine causes uh, uh, ischemic heart disease. Okay, it causes vasoconstriction, it, it is atherogenic, it causes leading to ischemic heart disease or MI ka risk ka, right? And um, many other peripheral uh, vascular disease, PVD also, vasculitis also. But tar is carcinogenic and it leads to lung cancer. So not at all smoke is useful, neither this component nor this component. You got my point, none of the component is useful here. So that is a thing. Anyways, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. Coming on the chemical carcinogenesis, there are two types of chemicals uh, which, ca which can cause cancer. The direct one and the indirect one. Direct one directly go and hit and cause the mutation. Indirect one are inactive. They are like pro-drug. They first go in the liver. Liver will activate them and then they can cause the mutation in the target organ. Right. So, there are two types, direct and indirect. Don't learn the classification completely. You must be knowing. Now, there are three steps in the chemical carcinogenesis. You have to learn the three steps one by one. So, let me tell you the steps. The first is initiation, then promotion, then progression. What do you mean by initiation, promotion, progression? Initiation, initiation further have four steps. So I would like to draw a diagram for you. Instead of explaining you, I will show you in the diagram. Okay. Okay. Just a second. Okay. So let me draw a diagram for you. Let me draw a human being. Just a second. This is a human being trying to draw a rough sketch diagram. We will see, say, see the same example that is smoking leads to lung cancer. So let's draw the lung of this patient, let's draw the blood vessel and let's draw the liver of this patient. Just suppose this person is doing smoking, this person is doing smoking. So smoking may say tar is going in the blood. Now tar is a direct one. For example, someone is indirect one. So first indirect one will go in the blood. 
in the blood it will go hai na so whatever chemical is there it will go in blood via blood it will go to the liver in the liver it will go inside the hepatocytes of the liver inside the hepatocytes of the liver the enzymes are present cytochrome p450 is present that does the conversion of this inactive to active so first step in initiation is metabolic activation in which inactive gets converted to active it is only required by the indirect chemicals not direct chemicals because direct chemicals are already active they don't require activation but indirect one get activated in the liver and again after becoming activated they come in the blood now from the blood they go to their target organ target organ can be anything in the body here we are saying lung cancer so it is the target organ lung it can be any cancer any cancer of the human body depending that chemical target organ is involved so first it is going to the liver getting activated after that it is coming in the target organ in the target organ in the target organ let me draw a target organ uh, cell a bigger cell and the nucleus and the dna inside that so this chemical will move in the cytoplasm of the target cell in the cytoplasm of the target cell it will lose electron yes it will lose electron and become positively charged for example sodium lose electron become sodium positive potassium lose so in the same way this chemical lose electron and become positively charged it is known as electrophile electrophile means electron deficient it has lost electron na it's electrophile it's electron deficient it's positively charged and it's positively charged na positive k positive and we know nucleus is negatively charged and our nucleus is highly negatively charged so first it will lose electron become electrophile and since nucleus is negatively charged this is positively charged they will attract each other like a magnet so this electrophile will go and hit the dna uh, dna like anything it will hit the dna like anything and there will be mutations in the dna you got my point this is the reason so here it will go and hit the dna and cause the mutation the next step is the mutation and a mutated cell is formed so first it's metabolic activation in the liver the first step is the metabolic activation in liver the second step is electrophile formation in the cytoplasm of the target organ and in the cell of the target organ the third is the mutation in the nucleus of the target organ and finally mutated initi initiated cell is formed the mutated cell one cell is mutated not all right only one cell is mutated but one cell cannot cause the cancer now we require a bunch of the cell we want this one mutated cell to go 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 on dividing and form a cluster of the cell you got my point so for that another chemical is required this chemical the tar is there it's initiator it's initiator and you know? sometimes initiator and promoter is the same chemical we require another chemical that is known as promoter now promoter entry will take place and promoter will go here directly and it will cause the proliferation of already mutated cell mutated cell pehle se padha hai we are doing the proliferation of that one mutated cell cannot cause cancer we want a bunch of mutated cell so mutated cell formation is is the job of initiator there are two chemicals initiator initiator will do the mutation and form one cell mutated hai na promoter promoter will cause the proliferation of already mutated cell promoter will not cause mutation it will cause the proliferation of already mutated cell so initiator should be followed by promoter promoter should not be followed by initiator obviously and initiator and promoter between them any gap can be there it can be few months it can be few days it can be continuous it can be few years also so if the mutated cell will be kept there in the memory whenever the promoter will come at that time it will do the cell proliferation and form a bunch of cell and that is the cancer now cancer is already there now the patient will have symptoms of the cancer that is known as progression so we are having three steps in front of you first of all it's initiation then promotion then progression initiation we require a chemical known as initiator promotion we require a chemical known as promoter sometime initiator promoter they are present in the same chemical it is known as a combo chemical sometime two different chemicals are there got my point so first a initiator will come it will go to the liver and do metabolic activation then it will go to the target organ cytoplasm lose the electron and become electrophile then it will hit the nucleus and do the mutation and finally the mutated cell is formed then a promoter will come it will do the proliferation of already mutated cell Ah, and a bunch of cell is formed which is mutated and finally the expression phenotypic ye to genotypic hua na person don't have symptoms whenever the person have symptoms the phenotypic expression is known as progression what my point so all these things are shown to you in the diagram also first the direct carcinogen do not require any metabolic activation it will directly go to the target cell but indirect one will go to the liver first it will get metabolically activated and then it will go to the target organ in the target cell in the cytoplasm they lose electron they become electrophile then they hit the dna hai na they cause mutations in the dna hai na the mutations are permanent permanent this is all caused by the initiator now we require another chemical that is promoter that will cause the proliferation of the mutated cell 
and finally the expression the phenotypic expression is progression how many of you got it i tried huh so this is the complete steps you can read the theory by yourself so this is the complete steps huh now the three steps i told you you got my point see a very good diagram you can get an image based question in this diagram let me explain you the initiator and promoter i told you two chemicals are required now the cross is the initiator and the triangle is the promoter huh there are five patients in front of you you can see in the first patient only initiator is there promoter is not there so will the cancer occur no initiator alone cannot cause the cancer initiator can cause mutation in one cell but one cell cannot cause the cancer right here in group 5 group 1 is done group 5 only promoter is there only promoter can only promoter cause cancer no it cannot cause cancer because promoter clonal pro proliferation karega kiska there should be a mutated cell now first for that the clonal proliferation will be done by the promoter so group 5 patient also will not have tumor now you can see group 4 the promoter is followed by initiator first we are giving promoter than initiator of course they will also not have cancer first we want initiator then we want promoter first we want the mutated cell formation and then we want the clonal proliferation of that you got my point so this group also will not have cancer but group 2 and 3 have a look on group 2 and 3 here initiator is followed by promoter immediately and here initiator is followed by promoter again but with a gap of few years or few months in both of them the cancer take place So for cancer, the sequence is important. The initiator should be followed by promoter. The promoter should not be followed by initiator. That is the thing. Initiator should be followed by promoter. Say yes if you got all these highlights. Huh? These things are very difficult to understand. And finally, progression may phenotypic expression. Whenever the person has symptoms, it's finally progression. So we are done with the, all the tests, uh, all the steps in chemical carcinogenesis. Is there is any test to prove it? I told you the steps of the chemical carcinogenesis. chemical carcinogenesis i told you all the steps of chemical carcinogenesis first there is initiation then promotion and then progression theek hai in initiation initiation there are four steps i told you first metabolic activation in the liver is required and then the target cell may electrophile formation and finally mutation right promotion is done by promoter that will cause the clonal proliferation of the mutated cell and progression is the phenotypic expression so for proving this is there is any test that can prove that can prove that chemical carcinogenesis hota hai duniya mein koi test hai kya yes there is a test the name of the test is ames test ames test is a test that proves that chemical carcinogenesis happens so what we are doing here in ames test in ames test we are taking a chemical in a flask this is a chemical chemical carcinogenic chemical that cause the mutations ha na and we are taking a bacteria in a test tube the name of this bacteria is salmonella typhi murium it's not salmonella typhi which cause typhoid it's salmonella typhi murium but this one is already mutated strain this strain is already mutated already mutated means uh, there is a property that salmonella typhi murium salmonella typhi murium uh, can grow only in presence of histidin it synthesizes histidin and it grows only in presence of histidin otherwise it cannot grow right so here we have mutated the strain that it cannot synthesize histidin it is already mutated it is already mutated now mix this strain with the chemical if the chemical is carcinogenic it will hit the dna so you will say ki mam dna mein to already mutation hai na so mutation ke upar mutation hoga the chemical will mutate the mutated cell ulte ka ulta sulta the the chemical will mutate the mutated cell so the mutation will reverse whenever the chemical carcinogen acts on a normal dna it causes mutation whenever the chemical act on a mutated dna it reverses the mutation you got my point so the mutation will be reversed and you can check by growing the salmonella in histidine free medium if it can grow in histidine free medium the mutation is reversed so it is proven that the chemical is carcinogenic this test is known as ames test you got the detail it's good if you didn't got the detail learn the name of the test there is a frequent question that what is the name of the test that is uh, proving the chemical carcinogenesis the answer is ames test here we are taking a mutated salmonella typhi murium that cannot synthesize histidin and we are mixing it with the chemical which is mutagenic so mutation in the mutated strain ulte ka ulta sulta there is mutation in the mutated strain will reverse the mutation so gene will become functional again so that is the thing got my point so this test name is important after that i am giving you a list here so i will provide the notes also i am not reading this list from the notes you can read these are the name of the chemicals which causes which cancer you have to learn it very thoroughly alkylating agents cause aml androgens causes prostate cancer aromatic amines dyes pe aniline dyes last to last year fmg question hai it causes bladder cancer arsenic pe question hai it causes lung cancer pleural cancer asbestos again lung and pleura hai na 
देर इज अ क्वेश्चन ऑन एफ्लाटॉक्सन ऑल्सो इट कॉज लीवर कैंसर विनायक क्लोराइड पे मल्टीपल टाइम क्वेश्चन है इट कॉज इज एनजीओ सार्कोम ऑफ द लीवर यू हैव टू लर्न दिस लिस्ट थॉरली यू गेट सिंपल सिंपल वन लाइनर क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम दिस लिस्ट सो दीज आर द नेम ऑफ द केमिकल्स एंड दीज आर द नेम ऑफ द करस्पॉन्डिंग टारगेट ऑर्गन कैंसर दे आर हैविंग है ना लाइक स्मोकिंग लीड्स टू लंग कैंसर इन द सेम वे दिस इज द लिस्ट यू हैव टू लर्न राइट द स्टेप्स आर सेम इन ऑल ऑफ दैम इन ऑल ऑफ दैम देर इज इनिशिएशन देर इज प्रमोशन देर इज प्रोग्रेशन एंड द टेस्ट इज प्रूवन दैट इज अमीज टेस्ट सो द टेस्ट एंड द स्टेप्स आर सेम but the cancers you have to learn this list can we go ahead ha huh? can we go ahead so always remember you are born to save lives ha huh? you are you are going to become doctors or i guess you most of you are already doctors ha huh? you got your degrees so you are born to save life saving life is not easy you are giving life you are adding the quality or the quantity of life in someone's um, life it's very difficult thing it's a privilege given to you by the god and for this privilege you have to work hard you have to work hard for any chapter you cannot take it very lightly sometime i have seen the students ma'am this is important this is not important important non important according to your exams you decide according to your syllabus you decide but important important unimportant doesn't uh, happens in the real life sometimes the unimportant things are more common in real life you don't uh, read those chapters you don't understand those concepts and when you do the practice now you get the cases so you cannot say the patient ki this chapter i have not read whenever i was doing the preparation i'm sorry i cannot read to you go to some other doctor you cannot say that ethically also morally also of course professionally also you cannot do so so i mean to say everything is important you never know you come in contact with which patient and you have to treat and deal and do the diagnosis or treatment of which patient everything is important whatever given in your medical books of all 19 subjects right currently for ambivious purpose but whenever you do the specialization in one of the 19 branch that branch and now days it's a era of super specialization you got my point so you have to study a lot okay can we go ahead ha huh? we will solve some mcqs on chemical carcinogenesis after that we will look on biological carcinogenesis read the question tell me the answer by tomorrow vivek i will upload the uh, uh, this pdf okay a simple bacterial test for mutagenic carcinogenesis tell me the name of the test a simple test is it amis test redox test bacteriophage test or gene splicing of course the correct answer is the amis test everyone knows it and and you know the principle also behind that the next question the workers which are exposed to polyvinyl chloride will have which liver malignancy in the liver they will have cholangiocarcinoma or fibrolamellar carcinoma or angiosarcoma or all of the above polyvinyl chloride leads to what so of course the correct answer is angiosarcoma in the list also i highlighted polyvinyl chloride vinyl chloride polyvinyl chloride is one and the same thing and you can see it is leading to angiosarcoma of the liver angiosarcoma if i change the question to aflatoxin aflatoxin it will lead to hepatocellular carcinoma of the liver so you have to learn this list very thoroughly please believe me you get many questions on that we are done with physical carcinogenesis chemical carcinogenesis it's time to start biological in the biological carcinogenesis there are some parasites some viruses and some bacteria which cause cancer ha na that is biological agents that are oncogenic these are known as oncogenic oncogenic organisms because they cause cancers in human there are six viruses out of which four are dna two are rna there are four parasites and there is only one bacteria which is oncogenic you have to learn the name of these 11 organisms at the tip of your tongue these 11 organisms are oncogenic ha na how many bacteria how many viruses how many uh, parasites there is no fungus Counted date which is oncogenic. Can a fungus कोई cancer नहीं कराती है. So virus, bacteria and parasites do so. So first thing learn the list. Viral carcinogenesis, bacterial carcinogenesis, parasite carcinogenesis. So this is the list in front of you. So concept should be clear. है ना? In in the physical carcinogenesis we have seen the two type of rays, UV rays and IR rays. That's why physical carcinogenesis is also known as radiation induced carcinogenesis. In the chemical of course we have seen the chemical. Many chemicals are there, direct and indirect. है ना? They all cause cancer. And in the biological we are looking on some virus. virus some parasites some bacteria which cause the cancer how many viruses causes cancer as i told you there are six or seven viruses which cause cancer so the list is in front of you you can see hpv human papilloma virus hai right? na it causes uh, genital cancers in male and female so in female it causes cervix and vulva and in male it causes penile cancer so please it causes the hpv there are many types of hpv you have read the detail in the microbiology there are more than 100 zero types of hpv human papilloma virus low risk high risk the low risk causes the benign cancer known as warts 6 and 11 type and the high risk 16 18 32 33 have you read all this so the high risk causes the cancers the malignancy so the low risk high risk are there the low risk causes the warts the benign cancer and the high risk causes the malignant cancer hpv the second is epstein barr virus epstein barr virus leads to burkitt lymphoma very frequently asked question burkitt lymphoma nasopharyngeal carcinoma hodgkins carcinoma 
both the uh, hepatitis B and C. There are five type of hepatitis virus. Hepatitis A, B, C, D, E. Among them B and C. I am saying B and C. Not A, not D, not, not E. B and C causes hepatocellular carcinoma. They are carcinogenic. Next is HIV. HIV. HIV may Kaposi sarcoma can occur. It can cause Kaposi sarcoma and HL, squamous cell carcinoma. Next is HTLV. HTLV causes adult T cell leukemia. And next is HHV8. And a herpes virus 8. So it is Kaposi sarcoma. So please learn the name of the viruses and the corresponding cancers they are causing. Bacteria is only one bacteria in this world which causes cancer. The name of the bacteria is H. pylori. Huh? Helicobacter pylori. It causes only one cancer, the gastric cancer. In the stomach itself, it causes two types of cancer. Both are gastric cancer. One is adenocarcinoma of the stomach. One is lymphoma. That is known as maltoma of the stomach. Both are important. Huh? Lymphoma and maltoma. Lymphoma, maltoma is one and the same thing. So, adenocarcinoma and maltoma of the stomach is caused by H. pylori. So, H. pylori is the only bacteria which causes cancer. Among the parasites, there are four parasites you have to learn. Cystostomiasis, Clonorchis sinensis, Ophistorchis vivarans and Faciola hepatica. Among them, only Cystosomiasis causes bladder cancer. Only cystosomiasis causes bladder cancer. Rest all causes cholangiocarcinoma. That is bile duct carcinoma. Clonorchis sinensis causes liver cancer also. But others causes only cholangiocarcinoma. So learn the name of the viruses. How many viruses? How many parasites? How many bacteria? So nearly 7 viruses I told you. 4 parasites I told you. And only 1 bacteria I told you. These are oncogenic. Oncogenic viruses. Got my point? Can we go ahead? So we will see them one by one. Let's start with viruses. In the viruses, I will give you the detail of HPV and EBV. The rest are also important, but learn this list. But I will give you at genetic level which genes are mutated for HPV and EBV. So viral viruses are of two types, not DNA virus, RNA virus. Among the DNA, four are oncogenic. HBV, HHV8, HPV and EBV. Among the RNA, two are oncogenic, HTLV and HCV. So you can see which are DNA, which are RNA. Hana? So don't go in the details. Directly come... On the detail of the HPV. How does HPV virus causes cancer? Yes, absolutely right. I told you there are more than 100 types of HPV. Some are low risk. Some are low risk. They cause benign cancers. And some are high risk. They cause malignant cancers. The low risk may best example is 6 and 11. And the high risk may 16 and 18. 16 and 18 you have to learn. So what does it causes? As I told you, they causes genital cancer. So in females, they cause cervix cancer. And in males, it causes panis cancer. So imagine this is a genital cell, either cervix cell or panis cell of male or female. So this is the DNA inside that. Whenever HPV, whenever HPV virus enters inside that, so after entering inside the human cell, the genital cell, it forms two proteins. What are the name of the two proteins? E6 and E7. Okay, so E6 causes mutation. E6 causes mutation of retinoblastoma gene and E7 causes mutation. I'm sorry, E6 causes mutation of P53 and E7 causes mutation of retinoblastoma gene. And because of which, both of them are tumor suppressor gene. Huh? P53 is also a DNA repair gene. So it will lead to cancer, uncontrolled growth and cancer. So this is the mechanism. You have to learn E6 and E7. The same thing is given in front of you. HPV E6 protein, HPV E7 protein. E6 causes mutation of P53, E7 causes mutation of P21. P, 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 uh, I'm sorry, retinoblastoma along with P21. So you can see actually there are four genes but learn the two important. This one is P53, this one is retinoblastoma. So E6 causes mutation of P53, E7 causes mutation of retinoblastoma and ultimately uncontrolled cell division and cell death um, uh, and cancer. The next is Epstein Barr virus, EBV. EBV causes many cancer but ultra important is Burkitt lymphoma. Okay, so how does it causes... Uh, uh, how does it causes cancer? Shall I tell you? Okay. So, you know, Epstein Barr virus is known as kissing, kissing virus. It is known as kissing virus because it is present in the saliva of the humans. Hana? So, why are kissing it spread from one person to another? Imagine if Epstein Barr virus enters in someone's mouth in the saliva via kissing. So, where does the virus will go? The virus, virus will go in the pharynx, in the tonsils, on the B lymphocyte. The target is the B lymphocyte. So it will go on the B lymphocyte. On the surface of the B lymphocyte, CD21 is present. CD21 is a receptor for Epstein Barr virus. So Epstein Barr virus will bind with the CD21 of uh, uh, B lymphocyte present in the tonsil. And after going inside, Epstein Barr virus have a gene. It is known as LMP1 gene. LMP1 pe question aata hai. This LMP1 gene, it will do certain mutations in the DNA of the B cell so that B cell become immortal. What do you mean by immortal? 
इमोटल मतलब अमर ये कभी नहीं मरेगा नो इट विल नेवर नेवर डाय दिस सेल विल नेवर डाय राइट इट इज इमोटल नाउ इट इज इमोटल नाउ सिंस इट इज इमोटल इन फ्यूचर देर इज अ प्रोबेबिलिटी इट कैन हैव एट फोर्टीन ट्रांसलोकेशन दैट लीड्स टू बर्किट लिम्फोमा तो बर्किट लिम्फोमा इज नॉट कॉज दिस एट फोर्टीन ट्रांसलोकेशन इज नॉट कॉज बाय इप्सिन बार वायरस इप्सिन बार वायरस इज इंक्रीजिंग द सर्वाइवल ऑफ बी सेल यू गॉट माई पॉइंट बाय मेकिंग इट इमोटल बिकॉज ऑफ द एल एम पी वन जीन दैट इज कॉजिंग द म्यूटेशन that is the story you can see 814 translocation is same like 922 i told you you got my point so if seen bar virus is not directly oncogenic you can say basically it is causing b cell b b b cell as immortality and in future there is high chances it will have 814 translocation so that is regarding the viral bacterial i told you only one bacteria is there which causes cancer that is h pylori that too i told you both the cancers are of stomach both are of stomach in the stomach adenocarcinoma and lymphoma lymphoma is known as maltoma maltomas it causes okay so maltomas it causes okay got it and the viral done bacterial done the last are parasites and learn the name of the parasites not important learn the name of the four parasites uh, cystosomiasis clonorchis sinensis ophisthorchis vibrans and fasciola hepatica you got my point we will solve some mcqs based on that okay the first question is in front of you we are done with carcinogenesis physical also chemical also biological also okay so have a look H pylori infection is associated with the development of which malignancy? Yes, can you tell me the answer? What is the correct answer here? H pylori infection is associated with development of which malignancy? I am asking you. Is it maltoma, atherosclerosis, sarcoma or just gastrointestinal stromal tumor? Yes, you all are right. It's the maltoma of the stomach. Maltoma and adenocarcinoma both. The next question H pylori infection associated with all of the following except they are asking except peptic ulcer gastric adenocarcinoma B cell lymphoma Burkitt lymphoma what is the correct answer this one is Burkitt of course the correct answer is Burkitt Burkitt is caused by Epstein Barr virus not H pylori H pylori causes lymphoma adenocarcinoma and a benign disease that is peptic ulcer peptic ulcer is benign not malignant okay tumor associated with all of the following organisms except so they are asking which of the following organism is not oncogenic I told you seven viruses, four parasites, and one bacteria. They are oncogenic. Remaining all are non-oncogenic. So tell me, hepatocellular carcinoma, non-small cell carcinoma of the lung, gastric cancer, and nasopharyngeal carcinoma. Among them, which is not caused by an oncogenic organism, oncogenic organism. Which of them is not biological? So hepatocellular carcinoma is caused by HBV and HCV. I know. Gastric cancer is caused by H pylori. ठीक है. Nasopharyngeal carcinoma is caused by EBV, Epstein Barr virus, along with Burkitt. But non-small cell carcinoma of the lung is not caused by any of the organism. It is caused by smoking. I know. So correct answer among them is B. You got my point. The next question is in front of you. Which of the following is an oncogenic RNA virus? Now the clinch in the question is the RNA. I know. All of them are oncogenic. RNA is key in this. Which of them is RNA? Which of them is RNA? Rest all are DNA. All of them are oncogenic. They all cause cancer. I told you the list. So only one of them is RNA. That is hepatitis C virus. Remaining all are DNA. You know there are five type of hepatitis virus A, B, C, D, E. All of them are RNA except B. B is DNA. Rest all are RNA. So this one is a RNA. Remaining all are DNA. You got my point. The next question is in front of you. LMP1 gene plays a role in the oncogenesis induced by. LMP1 gene plays a role in the oncogenesis induced by. LMP1 gene. HTLV virus, hepatitis B virus, Epstein Barr virus, or human papilloma virus. Yes. The correct answer is Epstein Barr virus. LMP1 gene plays a role in Epstein Barr virus that causes the mutation in the B lymphocyte of the tonsil, making them immortal. The next question: Which of the following is not a neoplastic virus, which do not cause cancer? Cytomegalovirus, hepatitis B virus, human papilloma virus, or all of the above? So you have to learn the name of the seven viruses which are oncogenic. So which is not there? So cytomegalovirus is not oncogenic, but hepatitis B virus, HPV virus is there. So that's it. Okay, so we have done many questions based on the carcinogenesis. So, got it. Anything else? Got it. So we have done the carcinogenesis. So from, from the morning, we have started with neoplasia, the definition of the neoplasia, the basic concepts, the components of the neoplasia, then the nomenclature. Then the, how to differentiate benign from malignant. Then we have seen the details of the spread of the tumor, especially the metastasis. What are the three roots? What are the steps of the metastasis? Okay, we have seen the carcinomas. We have seen the sarcomas. And um, after that, we have seen the genetic regulators, the proto-oncogene, the tumor suppressor gene, DNA repair genes, and their details, their examples, all the genes we have discussed. And we have discussed the carcinogenesis, the physical, the chemical, the biological. 
okay got it huh so here i would like to stop for today hai na my next session is scheduled in next month in august it is scheduled i guess it is on 7th august still the exact date i will let you know but it will be on the same youtube channel where it is right now you can see and um, we will do it on youtube only and in that i am going to take the individual tumors now give me a minute let me show you just a second so we have seen the basics of neoplasia today now in individual tumors what is the plan let me share my plan with you if you want any modification kindly let me know just a second give me a minute so here we have already completed the basics today uh, we have already completed the basics today now you can see these all tumors are my plan so in the next session so these all tumors i will divide in three different parts ha na episode 2 3 4 one is already done so today in episode 1 we have completed the basics of neoplasia now in episode 2 i am planning brain tumor thyroid tumor breast tumor and salivary gland tumor these two these four tumors in episode number 2 episode number 3 i am planning for hepatobiliary git renal testicular prostate and finally whatever remaining that is penile cervix ovarian uterus and bone tumors in episode number 4 so any tumor left here kindly let me know which is important from your exam point of view which is which is not written here i'm i'm forgetting something i'm missing something you can help me in the reminding right so i try to cover all the tumors in the series which are important from your exam point of view okay so we will see basically the latest classification of all these tumors the gross the histopathological features of all this and the important points ha na it is most common least common the prognosis this wise all the important so most troublesome thing most of the students find difficult is the histopathology how to learn the histopathology of various types of tumors present in human body so i will super simplify that ha na in each category we have multiple multiple tumors there are four type of thyroid i am going to discuss in the brain also i am going to discuss seven eight important tumors in the salivary gland benign also malignant also so i am going to discuss multiple tumors with the most super simplified manner so you know in the histopathology most of you think like everything is pink purple you don't get pink and blue this mystery so really i will solve this mystery for you i will make the oncology the histopathology of oncology part of fun for you looking at the image you can easily identify you can easily identify which tumor is it it is a image based question or a reverse question in your exam whatever question it is coming from the oncology without image based question simple conceptual clinical question you can solve that based on the pathology okay so here's the next session so wait till the next announcement we will do it next month mostly on the 7th of the august we will conduct episode number 2 followed by 3 and 4 in this way we are going to complete this series thank you uh, so much for being uh, with uh, me and uh, wishing you all the best for your exams and uh, in the end i would like to say something a few words there is no elevator to success you have to take the stairs i mean to say there is no shortcut for the success don't even try there is no shortcut if you think you don't study and still you can get a good rank rank one no it's not possible tukka is not allowed in the exam it's not possible you know so god also helps those who helps themselves so do hard work do hard work do smart work complete your syllabus whatever is your priority in your life right now decide that priority and be mad behind that right so that's all about it wishing you all the best bye bye i'm ending the session